Well, hello, hello. Welcome to the <sighs> Saturday, Sunday. It's Sunday, isn't it? Hook along. The um, Fluffy, Fluffy has watermelon hook along. This is a mini punch event. I am just getting set up here. I am at home. I did not have the energy to schlep it out to the studio. It is what it is. We are going to have a great time. I have everything I need to work on Fluffy for a couple of hours. I do not have a prototype to show you because I haven't done it yet. The nature of the hook along is we're going to do it together. So some of you have the Fluffy kit and we're going to be working on it together. I'm going to show you piece by piece what I'm doing, what I'm using, what I need, where the Pratt Falls are, all of the things that I'm out of breath because I walked upstairs. Can you believe that? I was thinking, oh, I better take a quick aspirin because I've been having some quite serious nerve problems in my arm. Um, and I thought, oh gosh, let me go get some ibuprofen. And then I thought, oh God, it's time to do the thing. Um, I'm going to catch my breath for a second. It is great to see you, Hopeful Holla. Good to see you. I was just thinking about you the other day. Let me know if you need any bits and pieces from the Split Bloom Garden. Make sure you let me know if you do because I completely dropped the ball on life uh, in August when I started to have problems and have pain. Um, it was beyond, uh, it was something different that I'm busier than usual. It was, I can't function at all. And why am I napping all the time? Because I can't stay conscious. This is just too much pain to manage. Uh, so everything was skewered. And I feel like I'm back on track with orders and things now. I'm right on top of all of that stuff. But I have lost the thread on things that I was supposed to send out. So please let me know if you've worked on projects with me before. If you're waiting for an answer or something from me that came during the month of August, it is a big Bermuda Triangle of a month for me. I am totally caught up. Um, but I did drop the ball on anything that was not like an official order. Those are the things I can see and remember. Everything else um, scattered to the winds, unfortunately. I'm usually a bit better than that, but um, whew, it's been tough. All right, let me see. Let me see what who other which other buddies are here. Oh, you lost your your card, uh, sweet lady. I lost my card later, so my Patreon was wonky. Oh, oh gosh. I hate it when that happens, the card stuff, right? Thank you so much. I had something like that um, when I went to the Cape. Um, it was actually before, it was on the way to the Cape. I was gassing up the car. And um, luckily, I'm being very sarcastic, luckily uh, my bank, which is Key Bank, um, saw, saw some curious charges, right? They were two uh, purchases I made at Joanne's Fa Joanne Fabrics. They were both like $8.00 but they were a similar number twice because I just ordered one online and then I'm like, ah, I better get one more. And they closed my card, right? Because of these like very suspicious purchases, right? Two under $10 purchases. So I tried to use my card to gas up and it wouldn't go through and I thought, huh. And then I tried to use it inside a gas station to get the kids some Gatorade and it wouldn't work. And I thought, huh. And then I tried one more time where I was like ordering a pizza or something for them and it wouldn't work. And I thought, okay, this is something, isn't it? But it's, you know, you called and it was like, they put me through to the fraud and theft and it's like, seriously, seriously. And then they uh, frame it. So it's like, um, we were looking out for you, you know, we wanted to be sure there was nothing wrong with your car. Well, you were looking out for me uh, to the extent where I almost became a criminal because I'm like eating food and ordering food and I'm not able to pay for it. So it's just the credit cards, credit cards and banks. It's a lot. Modern times. It's a lot. Kaz, good to see you. Your dog sitting at your son's house. Labor Day weekend. So far, so good. So far, so good. We've had a pretty slow day today. I have been working on the um, Henri Rousseau class. God, I'm having so much fun working on that. I might tell you a little bit about that later as we're fooling around and I'm working on this piece. Um, but it has been so great putting that together. For me, he is the artist above every other artist, every single one, who I completely get how he worked. Like it makes perfect sense to me. It was methodical, it was uh, technical, he had a real system. It was, it's easy, it's easy to emulate. And that's like the point of these classes. So I've been having so much fun. I've had the same three books open on him um, for like the last few nights. And I started a new piece. Did you see in our Facebook group, I think I also posted it on our Friday video when I did cocktail time, um, a piece called Autumn Magic. And it's kind of a hit or miss piece of, um, I don't think I brought up, a, brought up a drawing. I'll see, maybe I'll run down later and get the hooked piece that I'm working on. Let me just text downstairs and see if somebody will bring it up for me. Um, 
I'll do a voicemail. Don't you love leaving voice? Do you leave voicemails on um, Facebook? Can you bring up the uh, floor frame with the auto magic or just take auto magic off the floor frame and bring it up, please? Uh, I'm such a princess sometimes. No, I'd like to see what I what, show you what I'm working on because it's been a lot of fun. It was a free pattern I put out for September. September 1st, I wanted to launch something because I know that you're all opening the bags for your advent calendars. So I want to give a little time to open a few things. I know exactly what you're opening each day. And then I'm going to come in with, um, thank you. you so. Thank you. Maybe I'll just take it off the frame. Shall I? Or maybe I'll do, here, let me show it to you like this. Let's see. Ah, take it off the frame. Be careful, there's some strings. So I've got this on burlap. This is actually on a piece of um, old burlap I found at the store. It's not, it's not actually musty. I was just checking. But this is the Autumn Magic. It's a... Um, it's a very simple bouquet with kind of a sampler alphabet thing going on. You see the words autumn on top and magic in the bottom. And I'm actually using, oh, can you bring up the, um, the color set I'm using, the Halloween party 1986, just a stack of them on the table. It's like tied up. I, I decided to use, I don't know if you can see the background. I'm using some really nubby, let me get you even closer without spilling my water. Let's see. Um, I'm using some really nubby type yarns. Do you see that? Those are yarns I got from a knitting store. I got a whole bunch of different colors, so I'm doing the background in both um, strips that are really similar color, same kind of purple, see this? And then the yarn bits, right? And I'm filling that in the background. I use the same kind of yarn for the white um, stems. My brain isn't working that well. That's pain right there. But it's a very simple design, and I was hooking it in really traditional tweeds and stuff, uh, but I woke up really early this morning, because sleeping is a huge thing lately. Thank you so much. We, we take this, you take yeah, it away. Um, I, will, I will post the, the, the free PDF, yeah, so the link to the free PDF in the chat. And yeah, in both the in the other. chat. Okay, so if you don't have the free pattern for Autumn Magic, look in the chat, because it, it's about to be live, so you can just click on it and go to it and download it, and then you can print it any size you want. Uh-oh buttons the dog got stuck in here with me hang on mess so I was doing that auto magic it's kind of a hit or miss pattern <laughs> because <laughs> he's such a good boy because um, it's got so many small compartments and I was doing it with like dark tweeds and kind of moody traditional stuff got leaning towards browns and oranges and then I thought yeah I just can't I woke up at a stupid hour and I went down there in the dark and put all the lights on. I looked at it and I thought, man, this is such a gloomy piece. So um, I took out one of the new swatch sets that I've dyed recently. It's um, really bright colors. It's called, it's not a swatch set, actually. It's the Crazy Eights. So it's a double swatch set. And it's just the eight colors. It's called Halloween uh, 1986. And so I've been using these colors to fill in those big tulips. But you do it however you like. Use whatever you have left over. It's, it's a great pattern for using your scraps up. So I've been working like crazy on that and uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's very hard to hook right now even though I'm having nerve pain in my non-dominant hand. This is the hand that goes underneath and twists something, twists everything that I'm feeding, right? The yarn and the wool strips. And I can't really feel my thumb at all or my fingertips, my palm a little bit, right? That's nerve stuff. So um, this is the hand that needs to really work. So I am actually looking forward to doing some punch because of course with punch, I'm gonna be using this arm to hold my frame, but this arm has no strength right now and no sort of motor ability. And um, it's really tingling, which is uncomfortable. So with this project that we're doing together now, I'm just gonna be going like this, right? Because punch is so different than rug hooking. A completely different motion, completely different tool. Let me finish saying hello, Melissa. Great to see you. Oh, it's just nice to hang out together, isn't it? That's just what it is. It's really, your house is coming together so nice. Paula, hi, y'all. Good to see you, Paula. Linda B., good to see you. M. Van Stewart, great to see you. Howdy. Oh, that's okay, Kaz. I'm just taking aspirin and ibuprofen, and it's fine. I'm going to write to the doctor again before I come to Wisconsin, see if I can get something. And if I can't, it doesn't matter. I, now I know the shape of it. You know, it's scary when you don't know what's going on. But now I know that it's like something pinched and it's, it's, uh, it's igniting or activating my uh, already have arthritis and making it a lot worse. And I think I figured out, I said this the other day, I think I said this on uh, coffee time, I figured out the other morning when I was like drying my hair and I lifted my head up and I made a motion, I went, oh God. 
that's that's probably what did it like 51 years of doing that motion and it hurts every day every morning I do the same motion you'd think I would have learned at this point to stop but I haven't I think that's what activated it because it was ever since the last when I did that that this started to light up anyway be warned be warned all these stupid little things right they can trip you up and really affect your quality of life for a good long time joy and courtney you're right next i don't think you're together right but you're right next to each other on the thread good to see you both cats gallery great to have you there just let me catch up a little bit is there still time for me to take this class Paula, um, I'm going to run it live right now. Oh, the Rousseau class. Absolutely. I think you mean the Rousseau class. Yes. So the link to it should be there. It runs on Thursday. It runs live on Thursday. Sorry, Wednesday. It runs live on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it is recorded when I run it. So if you want the class, but you can't do that time slot, you can still get the class. I am sending a packet, not in the mail, right? It's an e-packet that I'm sending out. I think tomorrow because I'm still going strong on it right now I keep adding things to it uh, so that gets printed out even if it's printed out one minute before the class even if it's, it's maybe like uh, five or six pages even if you don't have time to print it or your printers not working or you're out of ink or any of those classics it doesn't really matter because um, I do everything on a presentation you can always look at my screen and it is recorded right so even if you can't take it live you can watch it later and you get all the same stuff so you're doing it exactly the same thing whether you're able to log on with me live or not some people prefer not to be live or to have the camera off um, prefer to be a bit more anonymous and I know some people don't know me and you're maybe worried that I'm gonna call you out or say can you hold up your piece or whatever which you will find out I would never do I always say does anybody you know want to share with I would never call people out because I remember how stressful that was um, so there's lots of different options, but yeah, you can sign up for it up to one minute before the class. Um, as long as I can get you on there before I'm logged on, we are good. Kaz, I love the outline colors. Thank you. I love the outline colors too. I, I've pulled it out twice already. So I'm, yeah, so far so good. April, good to see you. Oh, Ryan, you logged on, stopping in as I die yarn and say hello and happy holiday weekend, everyone. Peace and love to you all. You too. Let us know how your dying goes. Send us some pictures for the next gallery night. Gallery night was so fun this, this time, wasn't it? It was extra long, supersized. Two and a half hour gallery night. It was really fun. You can relax here. Yeah, no work, just fun. Hey. <laughs> oh, Courtney. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to keep an Oh, I need some more water. I'm going to keep an eye on the thread so we can see how we're doing. So, mini punch, right? Some of you have taken mini punch classes with me. I've been teaching a lot of mini punch in person. Mini punch, and I'm gonna bring you down to my hands in just a minute, just so you know um, what I'm doing and see what I'm doing as well. So this kit, if you got the kit, it came with the tools that you need, which include, uh, now yours is gonna be better than mine. Mine is not, mine is quite faint but it's the image of Fluffy. I kept the one that came out bad because I didn't realize the iron wasn't on and then I don't dare hit it twice. So let's start Let's start with describing how this craft works. This is I'm, We're gonna do a crash course right now in case you're interested at all or you're wondering what the differences are between mini punch and uh, traditional punch. Well, the scale is different. That's the only thing that's different. But because the scale is different, the materials that you use have to be different too, right? The tool is different. Uh, and the fiber is different. So in that regard, it's different. It's still you holding a punching tool and punching your piece, but you're holding with traditional punch, a quite larger punch, right? With a larger shaft and you're putting thicker uh, fibers through it, right? Different kinds of yarn or even wool strips, um, some kinds of novelty fabrics, but with mini punch, it's a much smaller scale. So for example, I think I'm gonna, there's lots of different mini punches. I think I'm going to, oh gosh, there's a Pokemon pin attached to my sewing kit. I don't think Jocelyn knows that. She's probably been going, where's my Pokemon pin? All right, well, there it is. Um, let's see. So I think I'm gonna attempt to use this one because this is in a lot of kits and I quite, this is the one I'm uh, liking more these days. Not everybody has the, the pretty punch, which I often use. So I might def I might go back there and use the pretty punch. Uh, but the pretty punch is a vintage tool. So it's a finite thing. And when it's done, it's done. 
um, the thing about the pretty punch, just to walk through the different kinds of uh, mini punches. Mini punch is the same. And great to see you. You're working on split bloom. Fantastic. Um, just to walk you through the different kinds of punches, there are a variety of mini punches because mini punch was very big like in the 80s and 90s, mostly the 80s. And these, um, this particular one, the pretty punch dials, right? And because it dials, the length of the needle, as far, however far it sticks out, changes as you turn the back of it. But this is a vintage tool, and they are on eBay for sure. But, you know, there's less and less as time goes on. I'm sure people are throwing these out by the boatload, which is a horrible thought. But uh, I was cleaning the basement myself today. You can't believe the stuff I threw out. It's like, it's heartbreak. I can't even think about it. But I will be, um, like, literally buried alive Stephen King style if I keep going. So we throw out a bunch of crap, and um, I'm sure other people do that too. But I'm hoping, like, that 100 pretty punches aren't among them from, you know, new old stock or something. The, what's considered the deluxe of the mini punch is the ultra punch, right? And this is a great tool. And I am thinking about, and this has the same kind of feature. This is what the body of it looks like. So if you can see, I don't want to punch myself, but you can see, you can push it in this way, and then you can lock it at different heights. You see how it slots in and it dictates how long the shaft is because when you're punching, just like with traditional punch, Every time you punch, the length of the shaft from here to here dictates how long the loop will be. Obviously, the longer your needle is sticking out, the uh, longer the loop is going to be. If it's shorter, it's a very small loop on top. So you have a lot of choices. This is the Rolls Royce of the punches, the Ultra Punch. Um, the Ultra Punch is between $25 and $35. Sometimes it can be up to $40. So I struggle with this. I'm thinking about stocking them so I don't want to do any trash talk. I'm never doing trash talking. I'm doing practical uh, reality talking. Uh, it's hard to justify that this needle is even more expensive than, for example, Amy Oxford's Oxford Punch Needle, but it is. And I get that it has springs and all that. Um, so, it, I mean, hey, you spend $30, $40 for a tool and you have a new craft. Um, that's fantastic. This is not the entry level tool, right? Something like this is the entry level tool, but this is still going to work great. So you've got your selection in mini punch, which again is the same as Russian punch. Russian punch is called Russian punch because when it first became popular, um, there was one brand, I'll never think of the name of it, and I'm kind of blocking out all things Russian at this moment, except people who I love. Um, there was a, a series of three that came out together. It was like a trio. And the idea was that one of the needles accommodated a single thread, and then the second one was two threads, and the third one was three threads. So the maximum that that series, they were three different tools that came together. The idea was that between the three of them, you could um, punch things that were a little bit thicker and a little bit thinner. Still quite small, right? Still quite small. So that's why it's called Russian punch. But then all of these kinds of tools came out because if you picture like the clothing that you had, assuming that you were old enough in the 80s that you remember the stuff you wore, there were lots of things with patches. Like I remember my cheerleading sweater had a patch that was done in mini punch, a million little loops on it. I had clothing, I had jean jackets that either had sew-ons or I bought like uh, applique patches from the store that were like, whatever you know things that i liked at the time duran duran def leopard the police whatever and they were patches and they were done mini punch and you would stitch them or they would be uh you know have the glue on them i was already sewing so i was being careful and stitching tons of stuff on all my jackets on the back of my jackets uh, it was very very popular at that time mostly for apparel uh, but then you know companies like pretty punch um i'm trying to think of what the other one is it begins with a d uh, D-Lite, uh, D-E-E-L-I-T-E, -E -E, and a bunch of others started putting out um, not just the needle and their own line of acrylic, I want to say yarn, but it's more like thread. It looks more like thread. And they also put out pattern books, huge amounts of pattern books where you could order a single pattern and punch that and put it in a frame, just whack it in an 8x6 frame or a standard frame and put it on the wall, right? So it was taking... Um, it, it just t a different angle on a craft, right? It was like we're getting away from the paint by number and the painting. We're getting away even from like the pin art and the yarn arts and all the Bargello kits and the cruel kits. And it was like the next thing to happen, to hit. That was quite a big moment in crafts. Um, 
and a lot of people got involved and jumped on the bandwagon and then it became less popular and I think the reason Mini Punch I'm just doing kind of an introduction um, Cat's Gallery my 80s wardrobe was maternity clothes for kids <laughs> I bet they were still beautiful clothes. Man, do I wish I had all those clothes back. Ah! Oh, you love the pretty punch, Anne. Isn't it fantastic? It is like butter. I mean, this is great, too. This is pretty much the same, right? So if you're, that's my opinion, is that if you're able to get a pretty punch from eBay, right? It's the pink one, and it's actually called pretty punch, or dial a punch. You could also check dial a punch, just in case the pretty part has worn off because the paint wears off, like mine is almost worn off. Right, and I sold, I, I sent out every other one, right? Because there was such a high demand for that kit, I didn't realize. Now I can go on eBay myself when I feel like it and buy some more, you know. I was letting it die down a little bit. But for me, the Pretty Punch is just as good as this one. And you can sometimes find these on eBay for like $10 or less with like no shipping because it's tiny, right? And you don't need the contraption that comes out of it with the spool. Uh, I happen to have my spools right here because I'm a pig and everything is here. So, the spools for Mini Punch come on this thing. I should have brought the contraption, but I didn't. You'll be able to picture it, though. This tool is hollow, like some of the vintage ones, and, and also the um, something Boyd. Sue Boyd, what is it? Something Boyd. Is it Sue Boyd? B-O-Y-D? It's a British brand, right? It's a brand that I bought from um, to do the last class, and their packaging was wrong. They sent me what I thought was a 2.5 millimeter uh, for Weaver's Cloth, and it wasn't, and it ripped a hole through the backings. That was a great moment. I thought I was going to have a heart attack, uh, literally, while we were running that class, but I made it, and everybody was very nice. Um, so I'm really careful about their stuff now, Sue Boyd, I'm, or whatever Boyd, something Boyd. I'm very, very careful, because I know for sure that the reason the packaging, I'm sorry to trash talk, but it's absolutely true, the packaging was wrong, and that's not good. And I, I bought another one of their tools, and I saw the third one at Joanne's, and the directions were exactly the same for all three tools and the tools were three different sizes so you know there's like some college intern sitting out there that's just cutting and pasting and that really screws people up because you ruin your materials and you rip things which is what happened so you have to be really really susan boy that's it that's it susan boy thank you april that was it um jenny says i use ctr mini punch ctr I should know what that is, right? Help me out, Jenny. It's my brain. My brain is not good. Ah, CTR. God, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Okay, I'll wait until somebody tells me. Jenny, I also have a CTR. I know you're going to tell me. I'll stop thinking about it. Ruth, good to see you. Good to see you. So anyway, some of these vintage tools, the punch itself, oh, sorry, got the fan blowing on my face. Um, have this thing that comes out that looks like a T, like this, right? And it holds this spool like this above it. And the idea is when you thread it, and we're gonna thread together in just a minute, this goes down the hollow, right? And it sits here and just, it like unravels as you go, right? So that's very cool. But the thing is, and Kaz, let me know if you found out any more on this story. With whether you have got the Susan Boy or a vintage punch like pretty punch like delight like any of those older ones and you have got this system with the t as far as i've been able to find find out and i have done some extensive searching let me know if the air conditioner is too high because it's like in the 90s today i can turn it down um i cannot figure out a way to wind for you on these spools so when kaz and i were talking about it the other day I found out, and, and let's let's brainstorm here. See this brown tool in the set, the um, spool. See the brown cardboard spool in the center. I was going down the Amazon when I was putting the kits together for the first time. I was going down the Amazon rabbit hole, and I was trying to figure out who might make these. Now it's also worth saying that from brand to brand, the spool is different, right? This is a different snafu. For example, this is Delight, and this is Pretty Punch. You see how those are different. How could that possibly matter? It totally matters because this thing that comes out of the top of your punch that grabs it like this, comes apart like this, like a coat hanger, like a broken coat hanger, and it grabs it well with this size, but it doesn't grab it well with this size because it's too small, right? Classic, right? So they're not interchangeable. 
So it doesn't grab it well. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't spin correctly because it doesn't have a good hold on it and it keeps snagging. So even with that tool, the tool is problematic unless you have a bunch of these spools, right? And these are finite as well. Um, so that's tricky. Hold on that thought. We're going to come back to the center with that. Uh, Kaz, let me know if you found anything that works because when I was researching this, I found cardboard spools about this size made for something else, and I can't remember what the something else is, right, at all. But what I found, I went down the Amazon rabbit hole, I found cardboard things like this. I'm not sure they were the right size, but in my head I was going to cut them or saw them, right, not time consuming at all. I was going to cut them or saw them, and then to to wind them, I was going to put an electric them on the tip of an electric screwdriver with a big bit and just wind them like this. God knows whether that would have worked. Probably not. Probably someone would have lost an eye and someone else would have lost a tooth and it would have been a disaster and the animals would have been running around and it would have been mayhem. But that was the only idea I had until I came to this other idea. And at this point, I've transitioned to talking about uh, the yarn or the floss. Let me just catch up a little bit. Hang on, because I know you were telling me. Uh, Paula says, I have the same problem as you. My ortho and neurologist wrote a prescription for this diclofenic sodium topical gel. Stop it. Is it really? Huh. Paula, that's really interesting. Because I've been using the Icy Hot, and I've been using that one that begins with a V, and I was taking pills. And then I stopped because they weren't doing anything. They ran the chorus, and then I didn't take any more because they, they are not helping at all. Uh, um, that's interesting. That's interesting. It's very, uh, yeah, it's always, it, it hurts always. I think I'm just used to it now. And I'm hoping it's not like the rest of my life that I feel like I'm in pain all the time. Oh, well, then I'd really have to focus on some other stuff or really start drinking. Just kid, I'm just kidding. Um, just purchased three strands CT. Come on, tell me what that CTR is. I still don't know. CTR stands for, only found CTR. Okay, so it's not, okay, it's from CTR Needleworks. Okay, interesting. So it's probably a shop or a brand. I don't know them. I have the Ultra Punch. I think the CTR are discontinued. Okay, this is great information. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I think, wait. no, Kat. Kaz, I was. I was talking to Jane. I'm sorry. You're both very good buddies. I just swapped you. I was talking to Jane about it. I'm sorry, Kaz. You must have been very confused. Now I was talking to Jane about it in Wales. That was it. And I said, go down the rabbit hole, see what you can find if there's any new info. Sorry, Kaz. See, I'm not as good, I'm not as, good as I normally am when, um, when I'm in pain. I, I'm good enough that I can function, but my brain doesn't work as well. I'm crossing wires on my friends, but at least you're all my friends, right? Try to find out. All right, I don't remember. Nope, we didn't. All right, I'm caught up. The needles are metal in different colors and sizes. Okay, so Linda, you're talking about that CTR. Their needles are uh, metal and... Oh, those needles. I know what you mean now. They're the super skinny ones with the interchangeable tips. If that's what you mean, I know what you mean. I have those too. I have to say, I didn't like those too much. I think my problem is what I like is to be able to change the height of the loop. Um, because I like to do pieces that have different heights to them. And we're going to work on that in just a minute as soon as I thread up. So um, that brings us to, I'm going to attempt to use this needle tonight, right? So this needle is as good as any. Um, let's look at this together. Let's come over here now and come to, come to my table. Let me keep you away from that. That's ugly. Put you over here. Now I'm going to do, hang on. Always takes me a minute to figure out, and I can put the light on in a second. Yeah, there you are. Let me move this away. These are my threaders, right? This is threaders too. These are just in a bit of a knot, right? These are threaders. Uh, some sometimes you can splurge and get the really expensive threaders. All a threader is is just like a threadle for a thread a threader for a sewing needle. You know those little round things with the little coin type face on them. You just disentangle. You got to pick the right one, right? It's a bit of a game. None of them want to come loose. Excellent. There we go. So these threaders are just the same as threaders for sewing needles, right? And there is this on the end, so it doesn't completely get lost. Believe it or not, there are many threaders out there that don't have a thingy on the end. Can you believe that? Because guess where they get to that you'll never find them again? Uh, everywhere, like every single place you can name, including like your pants, um, down the couch cushions, under the couch, skirt of the couch, 
uh, any, they land anywhere and you can't even see them because it's just a piece of metal, right? So make sure that if you need more threaders, you get them with this white tag or the one with the plastic tip on them. The only, th what makes a threader good, right? All threaders are the same quality. The ones that are plastic and more expensive that have the blue plastic tab, they're not a different quality. The metal part is the same. All it has to be is longer than your needle. You see what I'm showing you here? Here, the ne if the needle is this long, this has to be longer because it has to go through the needle. That's all it needs to be. It doesn't have to do anything else. Now, this needle is interesting because this is an entry-level needle. So I kit a lot with this needle. I like this needle. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. it it's like the Pretty Punch in that, you know, it's not fancy, but it's like the Pretty Punch in that it does different heights of the loops. Now, the one complaint, and it's, it's not even a complaint that I have about this needle, is that to change the height of the tip, right, you have to loosen this screw. And oops, do you see what just happened? I didn't even do that on purpose. It will fall off immediately. So that can be remedied because this is like a screw shaft, right? And this is like a, um, you know the word when you when something goes on the threads, right? Screw, uh, screw head or whatever. So it's not a big deal, but you do have to, it does fall off. And then you either want to put something more official on or you play this game with twisting it back on. That's the worst I can say about this needle is that doesn't work well. So I'm going to, let me see. Um, I'm going to stay, I'm going to try to keep it. Wait a minute. I want it as low as, as low as possible. This doesn't stop at intervals like the pretty punch, right? The pretty punch. Well, actually, no, the pretty punch doesn't stop at intervals either because it has this I might put the, let me put the light on because I think I'll focus better. The pretty punch just spins infinitely from beginning to end, right? So you can get degrees. It doesn't have to be an A, B, C, or it doesn't have to be an A or a B. It can be between the A and B. As you spin the pretty punch, I know I'm out of focus right now, but I'll come back. Um, the letter changes. So that works like that. The ultra punch does not work like that because when you're using the ultra punch, if you can see, there's the different numbers. I know I'm backwards. But you choose one, and it slots into that one. And yes, there's many to choose from. But this is the same kind of principle as the Pretty Punch, where you can really choose. Be careful when you turn that screw. You can really choose exactly where you want it. And it's almost like a, you see what my finger's doing? It's kind of pushing it back in. It's almost like a, ra you know, the straight razors, that it comes out, and then you need to push it back, right? This is an entry level. I'm going to put it a little bit higher. This is an entry level tool, right? This is plastic. This is plastic. This is metal, and this works great. This is the only part that you need to work great. So I've chosen my height. If you are doing fluffy um, and you have got the pretty punch, I recommend that you do it on A. The, the higher you go with pile, the taller your loops are with any of these tools. Um, this one is nice too because it has this rubber grip like a crochet hook. I quite like that, right, because I always have a permanent callus right here. You probably do too. And it always hurts a little bit because I'm always on it. But the thing about this, um, you know, I can change the height of it partway through and do part of it taller. I don't like I don't like in this craft loops that are super tall because it looks really it's it's the equivalent of, of too too long latch hook, right? When you don't want it to be too long, it kind of obscures the way that the picture looks. Um, I'm gonna bring one more light over me. Hang on, I'll put one more light here, just in case that helps. I can move my table too as the light changes and as the night goes on. I'm gonna stay with you as long as I can. Maybe that's good, let's see. That well, looks very yellow, but it is what it is. Um, so there's quite a few good things about this. Now when I wanna thread it, I have to take the back of it off. Oh no, I don't, not this one, I'm sorry, it has a hole. Some of them you do. Some of them are capped and you take the back off. This one you don't, right? That thing is right there. So there's a lot of good things to be said for this tool. The, oh no, wait a minute. Just as I said that, look what it's doing. All right, hang on. Da -da 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 -da. Hold on, let me grab it again. It might be that this one is mal. This one is malfunctioning. Hang on. I might go get another one. Yeah, no, I screwed this one up. You know, I bet I'm having flashbacks now. I'm thinking the reason I didn't use this one or kit this one was because I realized it was broken. And now I've taken it. Let's see. Hold on. Let me see if I can fix it. Can't fix it. All right. So I'm going to switch to Pretty Punch and then I'll use this one later. 
right? So these are the things that can happen. Um, yeah, that's frustrating. So you see what happened there? It could be that I was abusing it in the demonstration, but it's a shame if it's that easy to abuse, right? Everything, because the needle is right down the middle of it. That's what my hand is doing right now. It's trying to get it back into its groove, but no, homie don't want to play that game. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, that felt good. I stabbed myself real good. With, nope. I'm not going to spend any more time on that. I'll grab, I'm going to send a message downstairs, bring me another blue one because I really want to use that one. But in the meantime, I'm going to use my tried and true friend, the pretty punch. So punch needle, right? I'm going to organize my thoughts again and we'll come back to that blue thing. Let me just send. Can you bring up another one of the white and blue punches? I just broke that one. All right, there we go. So um, I ordered threaders from Amazon, but they don't fit into my ultra punch. Aha. All right. Yeah. Um, now, why is that, Kaz? Is it a different, it, do they not fit because it's a different length? Because as you can see, the ultra punch is very long, right? It's longer than the pretty punch. And if you have it on a longer setting, it's even longer. Um, this one, if it was working, should be like that. So that would be the um, lowest, smallest, shortest of the needles interesting the wire is too thick okay so Kaz I know this is a great conversation so Kaz um, let's talk about this because the, there's there's a few things I want to say um, that might be worthwhile and and it could be that just like this thing literally just broke in my hands um, it could be that this is malfunctioning as well right these are items that are the threaders right just like the sewing ones if you've ever worked with a sewing needle threader with that little coin face on it and it literally broke in your hand while you were pushing it through the eye of the needle. How many people have done that? Like everybody who's ever used one. It's the same kind of deal here. Now, when you get your threader and you're ready to thread your needle, you see how it's very um, loopy? Let me do this. See how it's very loopy right here? I always pinch it. Now, this isn't going to work good because my thumb is not working. So I'm going to pinch it with my other hand. Normally, my fingers work better than they will tonight and I can pinch it really tight. And you know, sorry, I'm not on camera. These are the games that we play with, with our craft tools, right? Name a craft where you don't mess around with your tools and have to fool with stuff to get stuff working properly, right? There isn't a craft. And I guess the very nature of craft is that, um, you know, you got have to improvise. So Kaz says, I should have ordered from the Ultra Punch dealer. I was cheap. No, I don't think so, Kaz. I mean, I. I mean, I use Ultra Punch too, and I buy these as well. I buy the cheap ones because, um, okay, so you tried the pinching and it still didn't work. Okay, it could very well be, and I certainly don't know, it could very well be that Ultra Punch, um, let me see if this one works in my Ultra Punch. Hold on just a second. See if I can get the cheap one. These, I want to say that these are even the cheap ones on Amazon, right? Because you know that I love to buy things that are a bargain, right? And it's not that I'm cheap. I spend money like I'm a you know what at port. Um, but you know, I like I don't like to waste money. I don't mind spending money. I don't mind surprise attack bills for stupid things. But I don't like wasting money. So I do try to get stuff like this and see if it works the same. Let me see if it works the same in mine. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong, Kaz. It might mean that from one to the next, they're different. See, this one goes, this is like the cheapest one there is, and it goes fine through my Ultra Punch. It went right through to the other side. I think, it, Kaz, do you have more than one in your pack? Did you want to try another one just in case? And you know that when you buy stuff from Amazon, if it doesn't work, you just return it. I know it's aggravating and you're wasting gas money and maybe you hate Amazon already, but I think it is a great benefit to be able to say, listen, something didn't work the way it was supposed to work. I want to return it and I want my money back, right? You tried everything. All right. That's really... Now, this isn't a new Ultra Punch. I'm not putting theories out there, right? I certainly don't know. I don't know. Um, but it could be that the Ultra Punch has changed. It could be that they've maybe gotten smart and decided that they wanted to have a threader that is only compatible with their single tool. I don't I know. No, where the other one Oh, no, that's okay. Um, is this what you all were talking about? Is this, is it look like this, more like this, the CTR one? Um, I'm not going to play with this one tonight. I never have fun with this. This perfect. Thank you. I never have fun with that. Um, I do have another one of these, so I'm going to try this. Thank you. And yeah, perfect. All right. Whoo, it's hot in here. Holy mackerel. 
I might have to pull my shirt off while we're off camera, but I don't want to do another one of my accidental uh, flashes. All right, and yeah, I did say another. Um, so Kaz, I don't know the answer to that. You can get them from them, um, but like I said, my my ch the cheapest one they make, right? They come these. It's like ten dollars for like twenty five of them. These are the ones I typically use, and the reason I typically buy the cheap ones. And here is honest to God the reason. Hey Heather. Um, yeah, my, mine is older too, Kaz. Mine is older too. This isn't new. I've had this for probably, I don't know, eight or 10 years. Um, I think, I think. Um, but the reason I get the cheap ones, honestly, hey <laughs> Kim, is because with all of those in a pack, and, and maybe I'm looking at, maybe I'm, maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. It's like it's the chicken crossing the road, but I break them constantly. They break. So here we go with like this like existential follow through thought. Are they breaking because they're cheap or are they breaking because I use them a hundred times in one evening and then they break? Because I do have the more expensive ones with the plastic thing on the end, right? Those are three times more expensive, but those break too for me. So maybe I'm a roughhouser. I don't, I don't know what's going wrong, but for me, and, and you know, once you find the thing that works, it's perfect. It might be that you were just unlucky, Kaz. Um, very strange. Yeah, they totally break. Oh, they totally break. But I mean, I guess I'm one of those um, 2023 20, pigs who, you know, I do a lot of stuff with disposable mentality. And I, because I know I'm going to break it or lose it, um, so far these have been good for me. But I certainly have heard that besides having to pinch it to within an inch of its life, um, people can struggle with the ones that are a little bit cheaper because of the pinching, because of having to thread them through the needle. Marty said, I had trouble getting a threader through. My punch was plugged with thread dust. Oh, that's interesting. It can be plugged with thread dust. That's a great one, Marty. That's a great one. And you know what else it could be? Let me collapse this needle because I want to move back to this one. With the needles that are less expensive, which is not the Ultra Punch, that is the, that is the nice uh, patented needle, right? There's the patent number right there. Even with the ones that are cheaper, sometimes what I have to do, and I don't have one with me right now, Sometimes I need to run an awl. You know what an awl is? Like I had one for making books, like doing a little bit of amateur book binding. An awl is like a thick needle. If you have a doll's needle, it should work the same way. And sometimes if the thing is clogged and I'm starting on a new one like this, like I bring a bunch of needles to class and the kit really doesn't include a budget for needles, so I buy these guys, right, because they're less and I don't want to charge people an extra $25 to give them a deluxe tool that they might not ever use again because they don't like it, right? So I try to start with these ent entry level things. And sometimes I do have to shoot an awl right up the center of it because there's a defect in the plastic or there's a defect in the body of the needle that makes it absolutely, and this is not your thing, Kaz, this is not you, but absolutely makes it physically impossible. But it always is like, right? and right up through it with the all and nary a problem again, right? Out of the class I did when I was in Plymouth the other day, I had to all two people's needles um, out of 12, right? So that's quite a big number. Um, but again, that's not the problem that Kaz is ha having. So here we go again. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer, just a hair, because I don't want it too long. I'm gonna experiment with how, now this needle is fine. It's locked right in there. So it could be with this one that I have abused it too many times. It could be that it was broken to begin with and it was defective. Uh, it could be anything. It could be I fix it five seconds after the show. So I'm going to show you how you thread these kinds of needles, and I'm going to attempt to work with this one. So when you're threading a mini punch needle, right, it's a little bit counterintuitive. I am going to want to thread up the needle, right, up the center of the needle. The needle is, and let me try to come into focus. It's always hard focusing little stuff. Just do like this. Hang on. Let me see if I can get us a good backdrop. It wants to um, focus on what's. I'm going to persist here. I'm going to persist because I really want one good shot of this. I know it's not good TV, but hang on. There we go. So I'm going to keep my hand just like this. 
see the hole in the tip of the needle, see when I turn the needle, see how it's hollow on the inside like a tube, like a straw, right? But it's angled into a tip, and the hole is in the tip part, but you see how, as I turn it, it's angled, right? So you see how it's hollow, and the tip of it is taller on this side. This is the interior side, right? So from this moment forward, I'm going to refer to this angle of the needle as the interior, right? If I turn it over here, let's see if we stay in focus. So far, so good. That is the exterior, right? That is the exterior. Let's do that again. Just so we know what we're using the same language, this is going to be important. You see how it's angled? and you see how the hollow is right there. That's where the tube is. This is the interior, this is the exterior, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm going into the interior. This might be hard to focus, right? Small things are hard to focus on. And I am going to shoot my, this doesn't look good. I feel like Sherlock Holmes in an opium den right now shoot my threader right up to the center. No, I just did a classic. You know what I did? I was shooting it up and it came out of the hole here, right? Like right here. And I don't want that, right? So that's a cla that's one of the many classics. That's part of the solid gold list. I'm going to come in here into the interior and I want it to go right up through the center and I'm wiggling it like crazy and there seems to be a blockage. Wow. I'm going to try this way just for S's and G's. I'm going to go into the top just for a second to see what we get. No, there seems to be a blockage. I might go to the tried and true. I might go to my pretty punch. I'm striking out with this stupid thing. Now, this is just what we were talking about a second ago too. It could, there's, there's no thread dust in here because I haven't used it yet. Let me loosen this. Maybe I made it Yep, that was it. I made that too tight. All right, so let's get this out of the mix, right? Again, this is a simple tool, and it has a great tip on it, so it's not the tool's fault. I'm figuring out how to finesse the tool. Uh-oh, now I've done it. To get the most usage out of it, right? Because I know that it is a very basic tool. Hang on, let's try it one more time. I'm going to try something different. And I've got it all the way out because I'm thinking maybe that's a better, maybe I want to, with this tool. Huh, that's funny. I can feel it pushing against this. I'm going to take this off. Let's try all the possibilities and then I'll give up on it. And I'll go to a different one. Nope, I'm going to give up on it. I'll play with it later if we have time. Because I know it works. I've used this one many times, but this one's playing me. How many ways can a needle play you? Well, the more expensive your needle is, the less ways it'll play you. So this one's really playing me. Incidentally, one of the things I sometimes do with these needles when they are playing me, particularly the entry level needles, the AKA inexpensive needles, is I turn the threader or I turn the thing in my hand because sometimes the threader is just hitting weirdly and wrongly and that is the problem. And sometimes if I turn the threader, like it gets stuck part way and I turn it and I can get it up further and then I turn it again. At the end of the day, uh, the fancier your tool, the less chance of you having grief and aggravation. So I'm doing the same thing with my pretty punch right up the interior. Gosh, nothing I'm saying sounds right tonight, does it? And you can see the little tail comes out here and that's where I'm going to start threading it. Now, what color do I want to thread, right? I'm going to thread right through there. But hang on. But wait. Come up here with me and let's take out our frame. And I'm going to put, you know, I'll put, I'll put him on backwards so he's facing you. But I'm stretching. You can put him in a um, hoop. You can absolutely put him in a hoop. Um, he works great in a hoop, and I do sell, I think, the best hoops, right? They are, I import them from the UK. Uh, I forget the name of the brand off the top of my head, but they're square, and I have been loving them, like immensely, I have been loving them. Um, they are my favorite, my favorite, favorite hoops ever. They are super, 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 super tight and gentle. So, all right, I'm just getting this weaver's cloth. We'll talk about materials for one more minute. I'm getting the weaver's cloth really tight on my frame. 
because I want him to be just like with our rug hooking tight as a drum and all of that good stuff so let's talk about um, wait a minute. I want to get you just right my neck is hurting me with my stupid pain hang on let me get myself adjusted and my chair adjusted because I'm starting to get incredible pain hang on all right we'll start like that um, now hold on let me figure out the chair I'm just gonna stand up for a second and whew, walk it off holy macro do you remember those chairs from the well like 90s and 2000s they were the shape of an s or a z and everybody said oh they're ergonomically the best chairs because you kind of in those i mean i was younger then i didn't have any problems with any any parts of my body and um you know i, I always felt like you were you were uh um, um like shot forward when you sat in them kind of like doing a nose dive or face plant into your work keyboard uh, and I didn't like them at the time, but I'm telling you now, I, I, I got to try to figure out what they're called because I'm going to try to find one and order one. Um, I'm never comfortable. Let's see how this goes. So I have got my design. Come on, come into focus. I have got my design. Um, hang on a minute. I'm just going to do an experiment, go to our Friday night gallery night and come back here. Yeah, he's still not really in focus, is he? I mean, the, p the piece is not super focusy to begin with because I ironed on the transfer. So let's talk about that for a minute too because we do want to talk about this from beginning to end. What is the material? What is the backing that you want to use for mini punch? Well, there's lots of backings that you could use. In my opinion, weaver's cloth is the best backing. It's called weaver's cloth. It looks like this. It's not a woven. It does have uh, synthetic, some synthetic content. This particular one, I think, is... Um, Ultra Punch brand, I think. Um, I only carry um, two brands. One of them is Ultra Punch. I can't think of what the other one is, but um, it's another punch store. And it has about 20% synthetic content, meaning stretch. So otherwise, it's like 80% cotton, and the rest of it is a little bit stretchy. And for me, the stretch is what makes it possible to do this, and that's really important. Whether it's on your frame or in your hoop, that's really important you can punch really into anything right people have historically punched a lot into marty says i had trouble uh, getting the threader through my punches plugged okay um dave said oh you kept falling off of them oh you kept oh like those chairs dave <laughs> like exercise balls oh my god you're not kidding you're not kidding i don't know how they can have those at gyms uh, surely, I have not been lucky enough myself, but surely people are having uh, hopefully benign but spectacular falls off those balls like every day. I just don't know how it works. Talk about unstable, right? It's like I might as well ride a skateboard. Um, Weaver's cloth in my mind is the best because it has at least 20% stretch content. It's just the right amount. Otherwise, it's cotton. People have historically been using different kinds of um, backings to use a punch tool since the, since the beginning of punch, which is like the Victorian era. So, oh God, did they have punch in the Victorian era? Yes, they did have punch in the Victorian era. It goes right back to the same sort of date as rug hooking, right? 1860s, 1870s. They had a very small tool. Um, they did not have traditional punch yet, right? What would happen next was the shuttle punch, right? Which is like the two plates of the earth going like this, right? We talk about that a lot on our shows. Um, let me come back to you for just a second. Hello. So what they had then was a much smaller tool and it was essentially a mini punch and it looked like a mini punch. It was not adjustable and they would do a lot of punching onto, for example, velvet couch cushions or cotton, uh, velveteen or just cotton or poplin or, um, any of those, uh, sort of any heavyweight cottons, right? And it was called feather tufting. So sometimes when you go to an antique store, and there were patterns for it too, people later in the timeline toward the early 20th century, um, right through like the 1920s, companies were making um, printed designs that you could finish in a variety of different ways, right? They were just line drawings and punching was one of them. And a lot of people did feather, feather tufting onto a pillow or you would get a piece of fabric that was like a cotton um you know that had like swirls and scrolls and feathers and a little bouquet or something like that 
and you would feather tuft it. So when you go to an antique store, and for example, you see an old pillow that has a pile of loops, but they're very small loops that looks like an applique patch on like a cheerleader jacket or like a school jacket, that's feather tufting, right? It was very popular for a long time. When you see designs that are, for example, in, vel in actual velvet or velveteen, those are not gonna be commercial patterns. As far as I know, I didn't see any, I've never seen a reference to a commercial pattern on velvet because printing it would have been the next problem, wouldn't it? So what can you punch into? I'm, us I'm using weaver's cloth on this and all the kits that I'll make you from ribbon candy hooking, and I do have another one brewing uh, in mini punch, uh, will be on weaver's cloth because that's what I use. But can you use your mini punch on your jean jacket and punch something crazy on this part, like the, the front yokes, and then on the big back yoke or in the big center panel? Of course you can. Do you need to glue it after you do that? No, you don't need to glue it. Do I need to put uh, one way, one side interfacing on just to seal the deal? If you want, you can, you don't need to because once you see the way we punch and if you punch already, not even mini punch, but punch, you know the loops are just not gonna come out, right? They, unless you try really hard or a cat or a dog gets into the act, um, nothing's gonna happen. So I'm using Weaver's cloth and it's gonna be a very secure and stable piece take a sip of water here. Hey, Goretti, good to see you. Did you tell Mike how much we like the Indian bike from um, Friday night? I've got my pattern on weaver's cloth, and one of the great things about this form is that you can, um, I forget what I was going to say, transfer it with, an, with a uh, transfer pen, right? You can do it on monk's cloth, too. I, I usually don't dare to with work stuff. But with the mini punches, you, you do an iron transfer. So I had this on a little piece of paper, right? A little print, printer paper. I traced it with my, now what is the brand? Transfer pen. I got it on Amazon. Um, it'll come to me. It's the only brand of transfer pen. It's ink, right? And it's, it's for an iron on like a heat transfer. So I literally traced the picture the way that it came out of the printer because punch is reversed. I will be working the reverse, the back of the, of the punch. I'm working on the working side and underneath is the finished side, right? I'm gonna be working the back of it. So, so that means that when you print out your, uh, God, I almost had the name of the brand in my head. When you print out your um, Sulky, yes, thank you, Rita, it is Sulky, thank you. When you print out your thing and then you ink it up and then you put it face down, you are automatically reversing it. Right, so don't reverse it, don't reverse it, or it will be reversed again, right? It's like a double negative, right? Don't do it. So you just trace over it, flip it over, take the iron, you know, on your paper, don't hit steam or don't do anything wet, right? Don't make it wet. And you just iron it, and I press as I go, and as you can see, I ironed this one because it's very faint down here. I didn't iron it well. I must have been talking or not paying attention, pulled the thing off, didn't check, and it was very faint. So I kept this one. And of course, I gave other people ones that are much, much darker. So it's very, very easy to transfer uh, with this method, right? Very easy, very fun, very easy. So I have got my pattern transferred on here with the sulky pen on my weaver's cloth, and I've got it stretched on my frame. Maybe you have it on your hoop. You don't particularly need a frame with this because the whole action of the thing is going to be me punching it like this. Right? It's not like it's not like rug hooking where I need to have one hand under here. I don't. This hand's gonna be sitting right here, dead, dead and tingly, and this hand's gonna be doing all the heavy lifting over here. Boop, 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 boop. That's all. That's all. I'm just holding on onto my frame with my non with my non-dominant hand. So the next question is, now that I'm all set up there, like a champ, what color am I using? So I was smart enough, um, I'm joking, before this episode to not print out the color Q for myself. But you know what? I can figure it out. I love, love flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, but you all have a color Q if you ordered this kit. These are the colors. They are numbered. And your piece is numbered. My piece is not numbered, right? So I forgot to say that important part. Um, my fluffy, uh, and, and my fluffy is a is a, a version of a Maud Lewis fluffy, right? Her famous Maud Lewis has been out of copyright since January 2022. Just so you know, um, her her famous fluffy cats and all of her cats were named Fluffy. 
um, she did in this crazy way with her crazy faces. So I did a whole series of fluffy cats that are all available through ribbon candy hooking. There's uh, four for each season. There's a total of 20 fluffy cats doing different things for different seasons. And I plan, and they're available in rug hooking size, which I think is 15 by 15, or mini punch size, size, which is the size I'm working in today. I'll tell you what size it is in a second when I look at it again. Sounded like somebody just took the door off the hinges. I'm sure not. These kids are such incredible door slammers. It's amazing. So I'm working in a size that's probably, uh, I'm going to say, it's probably six by six, right? But the rug hooking ones I think are 15 by 15. So yours is numbered, mine is not. And, and that's okay for me. It adds a little bit of an extra challenge and it's fun. Now, the light is not great, right? Because it's getting to be the end of the day here. And I have got, when I kit these, these kits for you, and if you have this kit, the best way that I could figure out how to get the colors to you and communicate where to put them was to give you the pattern with, numbered, with it numbered right on the fabric and then this sort of bracelet, which is a cable, right, that I can take off like this. It's, it's literally like a little bracelet. Oh no, I might need some help. Let me see, because my finger is not working. You just, yep, yeah, it works like this, like a bracelet. It just undoes. And then I have all my colors here. And all of the spools are numbered, right? If you can see the little numbers on them, but there's the three and they're all numbered. And of course those numbers correspond to um, the numbers on your on your fabric, right? And if you if you bought this pattern, you also have the key sheet, which is the piece of paper which shows fluffy with the numbers and then the names of the colors underneath it. So if you run out of a color or you say, gosh, I love this color. Could, could I buy some more of this specific color for you? I can't live without it. You can tell me exactly what color it is on your key sheet and then I'll know and I'll see if I have more. So I've got my colors here. This is the best way that I could figure out how to get colors to you without using these stupid spools, right? Because these spools are on average 250 yards per spool. The ones that come in specific kits are less, they're more like 100, but the large ones are 250 or more. So that's a lot, right? That's a lot. And I couldn't figure out how to get the windings going. So what I ended up doing was winding them onto these cards and they actually sell a winder on Amazon where you can put, it's for embroidery floss, where you put the hole, you see where the hole is through the thing, right? It clips onto the thing and then you crank it like this and it turns it, right? And I wind it and then I've got a rig in the most extraordinary way, one of my big spools up across the room, right? So this is like Flintstone times but it works great. And you end up with a nice collection of the right colors for the project that we're working on and, and these cards, which are plastic on purpose because I'm hoping that you'll reuse them, right? You can use, put any fiber on them and these metal cables, which you can use again for your next project. So I'm hoping that almost the entire kit is, is reusable, right? That's the idea. So let me figure out about color placement since I didn't bring up a sheet for myself. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the watermelon is the color of the watermelon. That makes some sense, doesn't it? I think that makes some sense to me. Um, and again, I don't have the key, and I know a few of you are doing this with me. I wonder if I should run downstairs and see if I can find the key. It's on my computer, but I don't dare check the uh, change the windows. Let me think for one second. Give my brain one. You know what? Let me start with the sky. I'm going to start with this guy because I know this guy is this lilac color number seven. I think there's more. If you're doing this with me, if you actually have this kit, look at your sheet, right? Look at your sheet. I'm doing a technical demonstration. If you want it to look exactly like the picture and the way that I planned it, look at your sheet, right? Have it out right in front of you. I'm going to be doing a variation on because I forgot to print the sheet. And for me, it's not going to make any difference because whatever I do, if I don't like the colors, I'm going to change them anyway. So. Um, so let's get going. Let me just pull this over here and get you right straight above me. There we go. All right, there we go. So here we are. I have my needle threaded and I've decided what color to put through. I'm going to do the background first. I have to say when I do mini punch projects, don't mind this old 1930s card table, right, for playing bridge. Um, it's a good craft table because it's, I can't mess it up any more than it is messed up. 
So with these little guys, if you push the thread down, if you have a kit from me, you should be able to see the tail. I tried to hide the tails really deep in there so that um, they didn't turn into a hornet's nest while they were being shipped. So you should be able to pull your tip out like that. If you're wondering, oh, I think I pulled the wrong side out. I did, so I'll grab the other side. It's just like with yarn. You can tell immediately if you've grabbed the wrong side. Just so you know, if you're gonna use this idea as well about spinning any fiber, whether it's this stuff or anything else, onto these little cards that are really for like a DMC kind of a floss, the best way to hide your end that I have found is, for example, now I need to hide this end because I 50-50 chance, but I pulled the wrong end out. So I wrap it around. The best thing to do is take another card and tuck it under with the edge of the card. And it's like, good night, good night to you. I won't see you again anytime soon. It's really, it's really there. So I take my thread. I've got my needle threaded. Let's thread one more time just to remind ourselves that the interior side is where I can see the open, the open tube and the exterior is just where it's just sharp and straight across. I want the interior where I can see the hollow of the tool and I've got my threader and I'm shooting the threader up the interior of my needle and I see it come out the other end right? and here it is. Okay, can you see that? And then I literally just take my thread and I push it through because I got a big hole like that, just like threading a needle. I want to be sure you can see that. Let me grab my phone so you can see I'm working on a, see how the hole is here. And I just put this through like this. And now I am pulling it through, right? Look at this. And it comes out here. So I undo the threader get it off the threader and now I have just got the tool with a long thread coming out the front right the front is where the needle is so I'm gonna pull it through until it's a more manageable length I don't want to pull it back through because then I have to thread it again you will get so used to threading that it'll be like second nature for you honestly now what I need to do next and this part maybe is a trickier part this is the interior of my needle right you can see here is the top of it it's all shiny and metal right this is the interior where the yarn is sticking out I'm going to go to the exterior this time right not the not the inside hollow part the exterior and going from the exterior into the interior I thread again so I go from the outside into the inside because I want to open my threader up again, put the thread back through, and pull it through here. Now let's do that again. Let's do that again, like close, close, close together. So, sorry, I'm right in your face, but that I'm looking at uh, the screen so I can see that you see what we're doing. You know, there's problems focusing with two different um, depths. So let's do this again, right? Just so we know, needle not threaded. I've got the needle, I've got the threader. I know the difference, we've already done this between the inside of the tube and the outside of the tube, right? The inside is the hollow, the outside is not. I'm putting my threader, I'm threading my threader against my dark shirt right here. By the way, Jossie laughed so much when I bought this stupid shirt off Timu. Come on, why is that funny? Is that so corny that that's funny? I mean, she's, what is she, nine years old, and she laughs at what I wear already. I'm in trouble, huh? So let me put you against my dark shirt here, my stupid, corny dark shirt. So I am on the interior, and I'm putting my threader up here, pushing it right through. Comes out the tail. Oop, there it is right there, right? And then I'm taking my color that I want to use, we're going to talk about um, what colors are good to start with, right? Say you had no color plan, you were doing a project yourself. Let's talk about the order of colors next. So I've got it threaded through there and I'm pulling it through my needle. Comes out the tip, right? There she blows, right? It's like a whale doing its, its froth. And I'm going to pull 
the froth back through and now I'm here now this looks really naughty right this looks like some kind of a weird uh, horrible party but we obviously we're, we're good people we don't know about that stuff seriously that's awful I just I hate threading the needle because it reminds me of like needles and needle stuff and people doing bad stuff and also people doing good stuff at the hospital which I also hate because it still involves needles now I'm pushing in threading again from the outside to the inside exterior to interior and I'm catching my I'm just putting it through the hole I'm threading right I'm putting it through the threader right because we probably have some familiarity with that and then pulling it through and here's my needle so this is the exterior this is the interior right you can see how the thread is on the interior your thread is coming out the top of the needle like a whale blowing its froth right like this this is the outside of the needle it's coming out the top like this or like coming out of a chimney right so make sure that you have the logistics of that I'm about to hold the needle like this and it should be shooting out the top heading up right if how will you know if you have it threaded wrong you won't be able to make a single loop like what's your chance of making a a single loop by accident it's zero right so if you're not threaded up correctly with it coming out the top like this you're not gonna be able to make a loop which is a good thing because you're not going to be able to make an accidental loop accidentally uh, and, then, and then it start punching and saying oh I can't imagine what's going wrong it's that you're not even gonna get that far right so that's good news now I'm gonna start punching finally right shut up and start punching um, I'm going to start punching and bring it back over here and do some stuff. Yeah, there we go. Now, I chose the purple because I remembered um, that the purple is my background, at least my intended background. Now, if you're working with my kit, of course, you can use different colors. You could go, I, I like the colors that she put in, but those aren't the way that I, it's not the order I do the colors in, or that's not where I really wanted to place the colors. Totally fine. But with a kit, with any kit, if you put the colors in the wrong place or a different place than what is intended, you might run out of stuff, right? I'm just gonna move us a little bit closer to the light. There we go. So one of the things for me when I think about starting is that I prefer to start with the background, right? Even when my head is screwed on, I prefer to start with the background. And the reason for that is because the freshest the freshest looking loops in this craft are gonna be the most recent ones, right? I don't mean the other ones look dingy or they look damaged or they look roughed up. I just mean once you start punching something near something else, you can catch, catch the first ones up a little bit and they end up, you'll see, looking not as neat and tidy. I would rather have the background be set and put all of the more important um, details, right? More detail, uh, smaller things, more filigree things. I'd rather do those things last because the background can handle it, right? Not really vice versa. So let's get going and I'll, I'll describe, sorry, let me drink a water. I'll describe what I mean as we go. So I'm holding my punch over my piece, I'm gonna start doing the background. You don't have to start in the same place as me. I'm gonna start right about here because this is all background, this area here, right? Right up to the whiskers, this is all background. So I'm gonna to wanna to fill that in. Is there a right order to doing it? Am I supposed to go from the inside out? Or am I supposed to go from the edges in? No, right? I tend to go for, if you think of it in terms, like have you ever heard of an artist doing a reverse glass painting? right? They have to do it in a certain order for it to come out as crisp and clear as possible. It's the same thing with mini punch, right? So while technically there's not a lot that can go wrong with mini punch, same things as with traditional punch, but, but less, there, there is consideration with mini punch as to the order in which you want to do stuff, right? And that's what I want to show you tonight. Same as with traditional punch, I punch in and I go all the way to the shaft and then I come over a hair and I go in some more and I get going pretty fast you go whatever speed you want whatever speed you're comfortable with just got to change my glasses hang on these are not those are not fours there we go oh my god I can see um, so I'm shooting across doing a bunch of stitches 
you can hear that nice satisfying crunchy noise as you go how do I know if it's working well I'm, I can do this right I can well I can leave my my needle in it and just glance right like this I'm gonna glance and I'll show you too let me see if I can you see there's some wait a minute wait a minute don't get seasick you see the loops coming up wait a minute I can do this better hang on we got this we got this let me hit five other things first it's going to be hard to see them because now they're not in the light. Let me try like this. You know what? Yeah, I was going to say let me undo them. I don't want to do that. There you go. You see them in there? Now, maybe you don't see them as well as I see them, but I can also feel them, right? You get to a point with experience with this that you feel them like, oh, gosh, I need to shave sometime soon. Just kidding. I can feel that it's the right height, right? Like I can just feel it's the right height. I know from experience that it's I'm doing it the right distance apart, right? Because I know myself and I do this a lot. But these are things you figure out as you go. The thing about mini punch, and my mouth is going to run while I just fill in some background here. I'm literally just outlining it as I go. I am not uh, super persnickety about the way that I hold the needle punch. Just like with traditional punch, I hold it technically the wrong way. And let me tell you what I mean by that because I stand by it, right? I know that I do it incorrectly according to the books. With traditional punch and mini punch, the idea is, right, this is the top, so this is the exterior. The idea is that you hold the punch uh, like this, like a pen with the exterior up and you're dragging along the surface, punching as you go, right? Punching as you go. And don't worry, those, those holes will go away. And as I go, are they going to go away? I punched really hard right now. They're going to go away. I got it stretched a ton, remember? As I go, I'm keeping the interior side down, right? That's the correct way. It just so happens that for me, I punch sideways like this. Now, did you see what I, do, what I did there? I turned clockwise, right? Clockwise, I turned. If my hand was a clock, I turned to about quarter past the hour. This would be half past the hour, right? And then we're looking at the hollow interior side. No. That, that could work, but it, it would be tricky, right? I turn to about quarter past the hour and I punch this way. And the reason I punch this way is I can see the tip of it and I can see the hollow of it with every punch as I go. Does that make sense? And I can see it going in and I can choose where I'm going in. So, hold on, let me get you. Yeah, I think this is gonna be good. I'm gonna go along the whiskers here. Let me see if I can bring it in a little bit closer. I want to think that you're kind of in focus. Let's see. So let me know if you're not in focus, because I'm not that in focus. I've got it turned a little bit. No, you're not in focus, are you? Hang on. Let's give him a second to juice up there we go that's an extreme close-up all right hang on we can do this though we can make it work let me just come over here so I have got my um, thing see what I mean do you see that hollow part as I pull up this is the correct way right and if you prefer this way then do it this way I can also do it this way but for me there's some it's it's just in my head right it's in my head um, there's something about whatever's in my head that makes me want to turn the needle a little bit and I feel like I'm going in at more a sharper angle I'm dangerously close to the um, camera I'm about to tap the camera sorry hope that's not yet yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do that for long because that's gonna be noisy sorry so I'm even going kind of upside down there it's hard to do that much of a close-up let me come back here and hope for the best but you see what I mean at the end of the day the reason I know that I'm not punching entirely correctly and I'm not holding the thing the right way, but that I keep doing it, the reason for that is because it works, right? It still works. Am I still getting loops in my fabric and do the loops look right? Absolutely. Can you tell by looking at my loops that I'm holding the needle in a different way than the instructions say? Nope. Nope. There's no one on earth who's going to be able to tell that I'm holding the needle in a slightly different way, but I prefer this way. And I have found that uh, with everything in life, whether it's exercise, punch needle, you know, yoga, 
hooking whatever i just jumped over some stitches there and yes i do do that with many punch it never pays to work against my body my body is going to win my instincts are going to win i'm going to default to myself and i can try to do best practice as often as possible um hold on one second i'm having a different problem let me bring it up here so you know what my problem is i have this on my rug hooking frame right and and it's getting stuck on the combs you see what i mean so let me get a little piece of wool i'll take a piece from the set i'm using to do the free pattern and i'm just going to put it over the edge so that it stops i don't really care about my hand my hand is like it's just my hand but i don't want it to keep catching because just like with punch needle if it keeps keeps catching my little bobbin i'm not going to be able to punch it ain't happening right so you want to be thinking about that what can go wrong while you're punching with mini punch well same things that can go wrong when you're punching with regular punch uh top thing you're snagging it right i was just snagging it on the combs and it wasn't working what happens then well it punches either a too short loop or it doesn't punch at all possibly pulls out the loop before it right and then it sends you into a tailspin of how what's wrong with me how did i do that i wasn't cut out to do this nope it's just that you are snagging it somewhere it's stuck on your arm it's stuck on your sleeve it's stuck on the combs it's not unwound enough right did you see that just happen there it wasn't unwound enough right so it's still going to snag that's number one that solid gold hit number one it's snagging Number two, most common thing that can go wrong when you're doing mini punch or traditional punch is your fiber is wrong for your needle, right? So with mini punch, uh, you don't have a lot of varieties. It depends on your needle, right? But for example, if you have the mini punch, they manufactured their own acrylic thread or yarn. So, um, you know, it, it goes through. But, and that's what you're using here actually is vintage material if you're working with me. But you can use sock yarn. I often use sock yarn in my, oh, I have such a good example downstairs. Uh, I often use sock yarn, sock weight yarn, um, you know, from the knitting store in my backgrounds. I'll, I'll shout down for one in a minute. And that works great too. But does it work in all of my punch needles? No. Works in my pretty punch, works in my ultra punch, uh, doesn't work in some of my other punches, doesn't work in the small Russian punches. It's too thick, right? Even the sock yarn is too thick. If you have DMC floss and you'd like to use some of that, great. But it might be that you have to unply it, meaning untwist it, and just put, like if the DMC floss is, I think it's probably three or four strands, um, you might need to just get down to two strands, right? To make it go through, slip through okay, because if it's, if it's not slipping through the shaft of your needle well, it's gonna snag and it's not gonna work. So I'm checking my work, it is looking fabulous. Did you notice how while I was punching, I was kind of going back on myself? It's because um, I could see that I had some little gaps. I'm still doing it, right? I've already done this area. I'm going back on it a little bit because I can see, oh shoot, I don't have any scissors. Yep, yeah, I do. Um, that's crossing, right? We don't typically do that with rug hooking. We don't do it with embroidery. You, embroidery, you don't cross over something you've already done. With punch needle, I have to admit, I try not to, but I often see spots where um, I missed something and I just want to keep going. So I just cross over what I'm doing and it all works out. It's a happy ending. So I want to finish up here because I want to do this little area here and a little bit more in here. It's a little bit bald. Um, these are clouds in the background, so I'm not going to be doing those. I want to pull out and I don't want to have a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press, right, this again reminds me of like having blood taken. Um, I'm going to press down, pull it out a little bit, right, so it doesn't pull out my last loop. And then I let go, I grab my pair of scissors, and I cut it. And I cut it right at the surface. It, there's no need to have any tails here. In fact, if you have tails, you can have problems. I cut right at the surface, right? So, so your surface is nice and tidy. Let's see if I can get a view of how it's looking. Do you see that? pretty dang good, right? It looks pretty dang good. Now with this, if I'm, if I'm packing one area, I packed this quite a bit, as you saw, I kept going back in. It does get a little bit taller as it packs. You can't block this, right? This is acrylic, but it is going to end up looking perfect, right? I always, I always punch uh, about as dense as this. 
it's impossible to tell you how dense it should be, right? It's going to be really hard to tell you that. Um, it's something that you have to figure out as you go along. When you look at your finished piece, if it looks good, you're good. If you don't see lots of ball spots that we call holidays, then you're good. If you see lots of holidays, then you need to go in again, like I've been doing, and just add some more punches, add some more loops. And you'll know when you're done because it looks good, it's filled in, and there's no ball spots. You don't need to go completely crazy. It is harder to see little channels or gaps in between rows of punching. It's, uh, with this kind of punch, it's easier with traditional punch. But this, is, this looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to do the same. Press down so I don't lose the last stitches and I'm going to cut it right at the surface. And for me, myself, I just get in the habit of cutting the first one too. Yes, I'm using the kitchen scissors because I forgot to bring scissors up. And this is, again, looking great, right? This is just how I want it to look. So as fast as that, Kaz says, I like how it looks so far. Uh, what is the best way to keep the weaver's cloth tight? Um, I get loose as I punch. Yeah, so when you're work, that's a great question, Kaz. When you're working in a, in a hoop, right and I not because I sell them right this is a chicken before the egg thing the reason I sell the hoops that I sell is because I feel that they are the best and the tightest if you're working with one of the square hoops that I stock and I stock them in two sizes um, it should be that's as tight as a hoop is gonna be right you, it's not gonna get any tighter tighter if you're working and and if it's tight and you're punching because it is a lot of stress right it is a lot of stress I'm gonna keep punching while we talk um, you have to just keep adjusting it. That's all there is to it. You can switch to your rug hooking frame, right, which is going to be better for longer. The rug hooking frame can really take a lot more abuse than any hoop can, even a really good hoop. Um, if you don't have the square hoops and you're working in a different hoop, a wooden hoop, for example, or a different plastic hoop or one of the Susan Bates or one of those, um, one of the big hacks that I always say is it's a good thing to um, on your take your hoops apart and on the bottom hoop wrap a one thickness of um, sorry I'm just concentrating what's it called self adhesive gauze right from the you know CVS or your pharmacy or whatever from the medical aisle just freeing up some of my stuff over here because it was it was snagging um, you get that self adhesive gauze right it's like that flesh color tape Amazon sells it in lots of different colors if you prefer uh, looking at something that's prettier but I wrap one thickness of that around uh, the bottom hoop you could do it around the top hoop too but the bottom one is just more innocuous and and then not both not both you won't be able to shut the hoop um, and then you should be tight you should be as tight as you're gonna get with a hoop right so um, yeah you're always gonna be tighter on a rug hooking frame um, I am starting to stock frames this size. I haven't done it yet with everything that's gone on in the recent month, but I do have them to stock, so I should really just put them out there. People keep asking for frames that are like, I think 10 by 10, the size that I work on, and I will be stocking them, and the price is great. It, I was able to um, get a really great price point because uh, my buddy Robin and her husband, Mark, uh, make them, right? And she, she knows just what I want and what I need, and. She knows I try to keep things as low as possible. I try not to do stuff with profit on tools. It's just, it's a Walmart. That's how Walmart made their money, right? It's just like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to, and you don't need to make money on every single item. I feel like I just need to make the money back on tools. But if you come to my store, great, because you might like what you see. You might buy something next time. You might tell someone, all good. But I feel that the supplies for this craft um, are already ridiculously expensive right? we're looking at very simple tools that are insanely expensive um, so I try to keep everything really low as low literally as low as I can so those will be I'll put those in the shop this week I promise maybe not tomorrow because it's Labor Day I'm still trying to figure out what my schedule is tomorrow because I said I do coffee time but I might want to do it in the evening uh, depending on what the kids want to do uh, they're all fired they're all fired up and we haven't done much today so as you can see, I'm just shooting across and uh, filling in as I go. I'm going to move to some different areas too. You do it in whatever order you want, right? There, I'm not doing it the right way. I, I'm snagged up again here. My spool, my spool was right here playing me, right? This, the little spool guy, right? So just make sure you've got Teddy, Teddy Listenberg. I'm recording. Sorry, 
he is autistic. That is the only thing happening there. And because uh, I thought maybe you thought that he was also out of his mind. Nope, nope. It's just Teddy being Teddy. So all good. Don't no need for uh, emergency calls or anything like that. We are good. He does. He does the loudest stuff sometimes. It's just like, particularly when I don't feel fantastic. It's like, seriously. You know, but then again, he's the cutest little puff in the world. So I'm shooting across here, and of course the question should come up, and often does come up, am I supposed to be punching inside the line, outside the line, or on the line? And the answer with punch, just like uh, mini punch, just like punch, just like rug hooking, is it really doesn't matter, but golden rule, uh, pick one and stick with it. I'm working kind of upside down now, so it's a little bit hard. But as you can see, this is not a difficult craft. Um, one thing, I'm going to work in a way that's more comfortable for me because I want to show you best practice. Hold on, i got to move this now too. Over my combs, right, because it's about to snag on my combs. Snagging on my combs. All right. So, um, what was I saying? You know, maybe I'll come to you for a little while here and talk. It's, it's, giving, it's making me seasick to look up and see all that here. Let's come here. I am in my husband's uh, workroom where all of his Dungeons and Dragons books are. Buddy, huh? All right. So, yeah, and I'll, I'll put this in it too. So we are together. Me and the piece are together. Having a little bit of a struggle today. So you get a little bit of me, you get a little bit of the piece. Having a little bit of a struggle just because I don't feel that well. But I still love us being together and I love talking about this stuff. And I hope that some of it is helpful enough that you would give it a shot. Because as I was saying, and as you can see, this ain't rocket surgery, right? I'm just punching in here. I have to, one of the other important tips, really important tips, you punch down to the shaft, right? Look at the, look at the way that I'm punching, right? I'm not, it doesn't need to be violent, right? It doesn't need to be violent. Uh, this isn't like that scene from Pulp Fiction, right? But um, you know the one I mean. Never watching that movie again. It's too violent. It's a great movie. Too violent for me. Not as bad as Reservoir Dogs, though. Movies I can't watch. But you just punch down to the shaft, right? To the shaft, right? Every time. And if you don't, you're going to get different heights when you don't mean to get different heights. It's great to experiment with different heights. That's, you know, your, your bag of tricks. That's expanding your repertoire. But you don't want to get different heights because you're screwing it up. Right, that's not the right way to do it. So I came back to the beginning, right? Can you see where I am back here at the beginning? Maybe I'll just be like this with you. I'm going to trim this right now because I'm afraid I'm going to pull out that. You don't have to be really worried about trimming. And again, if, if you pop out, if I come too close to that um, loop that I just trimmed, what's the worst that could happen? I, I come so close to it that I actually punch onto it right? It, it's remarkably hard to do. It seems like, oh, you must punch out everything uh, from before. It's remarkably hard to do. There's so many threads in this in weaver's cloth. It's pretty hard, right? Somebody be kind of having to hold a gun to your head to get you to punch the same one again. You probably still wouldn't be able to do it. it would be a bad moment for that too. But, you know, you just keep zipping along. And if you punch something that you have punched before, uh, then someone shouts, you sunk my battleship not really, then you just pop it out, right? And then you'll have to trim it on the other side. In other words, if I punch something that I've already punched, then I literally punch the loop out on the correct side, right? And how will I know that? Well, I'll know that when I turn my piece over. There might be a couple of loops that are twice as long because I accidentally punched them out. And what am I going to do? I'm just going to trim them to be the same height as the rest of the pile, of the piece. That's what I'm going to do. It's not a biggie. It's not a biggie at all. And it happens all, well, it doesn't actually happen all the time. I'll say, for example, when I do these fluffy pieces, because I think this is the third or fourth that I've done in mini punch, um, when I flip over my mini punch, and as you can see, you know, I'm not a big techniques person. I'm just like a get her done person. And I'm getting her done, right? Hang on, I'll show you again. We're getting her done pretty fast. I'm going to have this guy done in a couple of minutes. I probably won't finish this guy because I'm going to want to move on to something else. Because um, I'm going to be with you till about 7. And then I want to eat and get back to my Rousseau. Um, but hang on. Let me just stay right here. And then I'll show you where we are. 
You see, so I'm making some good progress in there. You can see things are happening. It's all, um, gosh, I wish you could see it better. I'll have to show you later. I'll have to show some photos. You know, let me take a photo right now so I can post it later. But I'm looking at it and it's just a beautiful, even pile. Hold on one second. Let me get this shot for you. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks like, I'm not tooting my own horn, but it looks absolutely perfect. So, incidentally, this is the first frame I got um, when I was living in the Netherlands and uh, I wanted to get into rug hooking. This is the one that my mom got me for Christmas from this place in, I think, New Hampshire. And um, yeah, it was, my, it was my leaf kit, super fun. Let me see if I can come to you like this. Yeah, you can do maybe a little bit of this so you can see me and, you probably can't see me and the thing, but you know I'm right here. So, um, yeah, I just kind of cruise along. Out of a piece this large, and as I say, I've, this isn't the first or second one that I've done, usually when I finish it and I flip over uh, the finished piece, because I typically just glance at it the way I have been glancing at it, and that's about it. And um, when I glanced at it just now, there were no loops that were off. They were all exactly the same height, so I haven't had any issues at all so far. When I finish the whole piece and I take it off the frame and look at it, honest to God, I'm not exaggerating. Maybe there's one or two loops that I've punched out. And you can see, I mean, normally when I'm punching, I'm watching, um, I'm watching one of my shows, like uh, binging on Only Murders in the Building or something like that and eating, half eating. Um, and I'm not super paying attention and I still am not really having any problems or snafus. It isn't that difficult of a craft, right? The main things, and I'm just gonna sound like a broken record, but it's worth repeating. The main things that can go wrong are, and I just did it, you see how this is under my arm? Well, guess what? It's not gonna punch, because it's stuck, right? Get it away, get it away from your frame, get it away from your arm, get it away from your clothes, get it, get it loose, make sure it's loose, just like with traditional punch. And um, that's the main thing. And if you are not having, if you're not making loops, right, first check that you're not snagged up, then check that the fiber that you've got running through your punch needle is appropriate for the punch needle that you're using. How can you tell? I have a vintage punch needle. How can I tell if my, if my fiber is okay for it? Well, punch with it. Punch with it. And once you start punching with it, if it's not working, you're going to, by, by way of deduction, right, you're going to eliminate everything that it could be, and I forget what this quote is, I think it is an Arthur Conan Doyle quote, and whatever solution is left, whatever option is left, no matter how unlikely it is, I think this is a Sherlock Holmes thing, um, it has to be the right solution, right? So if you, if it's not making loops, and it's not snagged, and it's threaded the right way, right? The, it's doing its whale spray out the top of the needle, out the exterior, side of the needle, if those things are correct and your loops aren't staying, your 99% chance looking at a situation where your um, fiber is too thick. Or it can be too thin. You can double it up. Sometimes it's too thin and it doesn't, doesn't want to dig in, you know. It's like too airy. Now, do you see how I am doing kind of a diagonal here? Can you see that? Am I doing a diagonal so I have directional hooking, right? So it looks really cool and diagonal in this guy? No, you don't do directional hooking with mini punch, at least not all the same height, right? I could think about doing directional hooking if I was doing different heights and I had some fancy stitches going on, but I'm just filling in areas of color and um, there is no directional hooking. They are all the same height at this moment and they all look the same. So no matter what order I punch it in, it's not going to make any difference. It's going to look exactly the same. So that's one thing about mini punch. I'm going to unthread here, right? I press my finger down, right? Like taking blood, right? These are awful analogies. Everyone is like, maybe you're not like me, but it's like, oh God, no, let's not think about that. And let's look one more time. I'm going to switch colors. I'm not done with my colors, but I'm going to switch colors. Can you see that in there? So it's all nice and even, and it's not, as you can see, it's not going to take me long to finish that sky. I still have a ton left on more than you're ever going to be able to use on your spool, but I'm going to get ready to do another color.
So just for funsies. And oh, pa uh, Paula, you said, is there such a frame um, just for punching? Okay, that's a great question. So the thing about punching, right, because you can see what I've been up to here. I don't need the rug hooking frame, right, because I'm not putting any hand under. I don't need to be stepped, right? The lap part, and then there's a step, and then you get the frame part. I don't need to be stepped. I just need to be able to be on top punching down. So um, that's why hoops can work. But they also, so Amy Oxford makes, um, I should have said first, ribbon candy hooking makes, I stock um, a punch frame that is just the wood with the combs, right? I stock it in, I think, this a smaller size than Amy Oxford does. She has a bunch of sizes. Hers are fantastic, and she's a great friend. Um, but I also stock them, and I have a custom one that Robin and Mark make that's a little bit smaller that would be really good for mini punch projects. And it doesn't have a bottom. It's just like the frame with the combs on all four sides. Um, and they're, they actually just made another one that's even smaller for projects like this that are like five by five and under, or even like eight by eight and under. So that's another thing that I'll put into the store because they have made those and they are stock and I should be stocking them because I have them in stock. So yes, um, those are made. And as far as I know, I mean, I don't know because I don't shop other people's stores because I just don't have the time. I know Amy makes them because I know Amy. Um, I make them, I feel like there's at least one person on Amazon who's making them. Um, there's probably a ton of people who are making them, to be honest. It just is one of those staple things as we go along that you could use for mini punch or traditional punch. So, so this is a good conversation too. If you get one of those frames, right, that's specifically for punch that you can lean up against the edge of a table or the arm of the couch or whatever, um, a TV, if you're, if you're sitting up in bed or whatever, this is how I got the neck thing too, so be careful with sitting in bad places. But if you're sitting somewhere more comfy and you've got like a breakfast tray and you're leaning up against that or something, um, these frames are gonna work great. So the question becomes, do you want a frame that's larger that you can use for both uh, traditional punch scaled projects and mini punch, or do you want a smaller one for mini punch? And my answer to that would be, and you know that I never tell you to buy stuff that you don't need, right? And it always depends on your wallet. Never stress yourself out with money stuff because you're buying craft supplies, right? Easy for me to say I do it all the time, but um, yeah, not necessary. But I would say in this one instance, it's tricky because with the larger frame, of course you can do larger punch needle pieces, right? So that's nice. With with the larger frame, if you were to put a mini punch project on it, it would be so small that you would waste so much weaver's cloth to get to the edges. Now, how much does weaver's cloth cost per yard? About $10 a yard. So it's not like it's extraordinarily expensive, but for $10 a yard, if you're wasting, if you're wasting eight tenths of that every time you do a mini punch project, and it's often, you, you maybe want to think about buying like a small frame that's like $40 or right around there. I think that's what ours is. I'll have to check, but I, I think it's very inexpensive. Um, you might want to think of just investing in a smaller frame so you're not wasting so much material, right? Because it becomes that silly question of um, um, what makes more sense, what becomes more economical. It's great when things can double up, but mini punch is on a completely different scale than traditional punch. Now I'm at a point here where I finished with this color and so I'm just going to pull it back out. I'm going to wrap it back around my spool and I'm going to look at my piece again and see what I want the next color to be. When I wrap it, I'm not going to wrap it the same way because I want to go back into it. So I just feed it into the teeth, right? Like I just feed it into the little teeth on top, right? Just to kind of lock it. So I'm going to look at, ah, damn you. All right. That was just the CTR, I think. Um, I'm going to look at my piece again, and let's see, my piece is a little bit upside down for me. Um, let me look at it. Let me look at them over here and see. Maybe I'll do the watermelon part of the watermelon. I think I'm going to do the watermelon part of the watermelon. Because the thing with the watermelon, the nature of the watermelon, right, is that it's got a lot of the seeds, and those are real pretty. You know what, you know what I'm definitely going to do last is going to be the whiskers, right, because talk about fine and filigree. I want to do the background. Oh, I could do the clouds. Oh, let's do the clouds real quick. Let's do one of the clouds because that will be so nice against the back. Now I wish I finished the background because then the clouds would really stand out. So I had four different colors in the design. It's all coming back to me now. I had four different colors for the four different clouds. 
Okay, so I could just choose, I think they were, I'm trying to remember, smaller ones, more portable too. Yeah, the smaller ones, more portable too. That's a great, um, that's a great tip, Kaz. Kaz, did you say you wanted to um, teach the tutorial class on how to do the cover for the comb frame? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Because Kaz sent us some pictures for cocktail night where she was having a bit of a fight with sewing the cover. So I'm being a bit of a tease. I'm sorry. I hate to be teased. But um, it was a great post and it was a great segment. So, <laughs> all right. I think I'm going to do, I, I think that is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's do that. So let me choose some fun colors. I think I might do, um, I think I'm going to do my light blue. And again, if you have the kit in front of you, please consult the kit if you want it to look just like the picture. I don't have the thing in front of me, and I'm totally at peace with that. Um, that's the kind of animal that I am. But if you like things to be just so, be putting the colors in the right places. Can you pull out your mini punch um, pieces? Like, can you pull them out and, and re-punch it? Sure, absolutely. You know, just like with regular punch, if you don't like it, just pull it and wrap it back around your bobbin. That's the other thing about, I pulled out the wrong end again, 50-50. That's the other thing about this craft, right? If you want to pull it out and save the materials, save the materials. Just remember two things. You're not going to have an easy job of pulling it out if you have crossed over and jumped all over the place like I just did, right? So if I had the feeling that I might want to pull that part out, I should not have been jumping over the backs of other stitches because it's going to be that much harder to pull it out. I don't have the feeling that I'm pulling out that color. That is the color I want in the sky. And at this point with my experience, I trust that it's going to look right on the correct side and it does. So for me, it's good. If I had it in my head that I might want to pull it out, I would not want to be jumping because then it's going to knot up as you pull, as you try to pull it out. And you want to save your materials if you can because why waste, right? Kaz says, can you punch the whiskers at a higher level? Definitely you can. Be careful with it. Experiment with it. Um, leave a little space for the whiskers, not too much of a space, right? Just a tiny space. Um, you can punch them higher, and I would suggest punching them higher. Um, if you punch them a lot higher, they might look silly. I wouldn't punch them so high that you really see the loops sticking up on the surface, unless unless you want. You know, I met a cat yesterday. It was a, like an elderly cat who had, you know, how, how sometimes they get older and they look crazy, and their um, eyebrows and their whiskers are like curling and stuff. He looked like that, and it was funny because he was so... Uh, frumped out, you know, at this advanced stage of his life that he had, he looked crazy, like he, his hair was crazy. But that's, that's what the loops will look like if they're very much higher. They'll look really curly on the surface. It might be exactly what you want. So experiment first. Uh, I would put it up one level. Like if you're doing an A or a one, put it up to a two or a B. Um, but try, do a couple, look at it, and then pull it out if you don't like it. The other thing about pulling out your stitches is crossing over, not good, right? Because it makes it hard to pull them out. Still possible, but makes it a lot more time consuming. Um, if you have cut a lot as you go, like if you don't want to cross over and you've done lots of cut C's and, you're, and when you pull it out, you've got pieces that are this long, those go in the trash because they're too short to thread. Anything you thread has to be longer than the actual needle or you can't thread it right? So if you are like, well, I don't want to do crossovers, right? Because there's pluses and minuses to everything. I don't want to do crossovers because I might want to jerk it all out later. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to do small areas at a time and I'm going to cut as I go. Well, then you might end up with a bunch of pieces that are the size of like latch hook yarn cut and you're not going to get them in the needle. So they're going to go in the trash anyway. So just think about those two things if you want to pull out, right, which you which I do, I'm not on this project because I've already color planned it. It might be that I don't like the way I put the clouds in and that I do pull stuff out. Um, I don't anticipate that happening, but who anticipates anything in this life? I didn't anticipate my shoulder giving out and being in pain for um, four weeks. So I'm back to this again, and I'm doing a time, oh, we're really running late. I'm going to do one more color, and then I'll probably stop, and I'll come back. I'll go a little bit later than five. I'll go a little bit later. I just want to work on that Rousseau stuff. 
I'm back to this threading business and I know I'm super repetitive, but if you're watching this stream, not for company and funsies, but to figure out uh, how to do this for the first time, or you're considering it, I wanna be really clear about how you do this. And again, there's gonna be a focus problem, but I am on the interior of my needle and I am threading it too far away to focus on it myself. All right. So I'm going into the interior from the tip, right, in, and the loop part comes out the back, right? And it's like a loop, like a shiny loop like this. And I put, just like threading a needle, I hold it open and I put the end of my yarn through there, right? And then I yank it through gently, gentle yank. And now I have it coming out the top and I go in through the exterior, not the hollow side, the outside, the exterior. I thread in that way. Mama's eyes are not good. There we go. So I thread in this way, exterior in, and then again, I just want to, because the punch needle gets threaded twice, always. gets No matter which one you have, ultra punch two, pretty punch, all of them threaded twice, right? And then it ends up coming out the top. The slant is like this underneath, ends up coming out the top like a whale spouting, like this. And then I'm going to loosen up my thing a little bit, so that I don't have too many pulls. And I'm just gonna punch my clap. Let's punch that cloud. Let's punch this one over here. Uh, and I'm gonna cover my combs again, right? My combs right here, because otherwise I know it's gonna get stuck. Definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and over, like I almost just did, and thinking it's gonna be different. It's not gonna be different. So I covered up my combs. And same thing, I'm just going along, punching the cloud. I don't wanna get, I wanna get pretty close to the line before. This is something that comes with experience. It's, well, how am I gonna give you a measurement for this? What, in millimeters or uh, what's smaller than a millimeter, right? Like, it's it's a tiny amount. Uh, these, are, these are all tiny numbers that we're looking at. You're just gonna get used to punching and and looking at it and going, okay, yep, I'm punching. You're not gonna really know if you're packing, right? With this craft, you're not really gonna know. It's not really gonna buckle a ton. It'll buckle a little bit, but it won't buckle like it will if you're packing with rug hooking or, or punch needle. Uh, but it'll start to get a little bit too dense, right? It'll look a little bit too puffy and three-dimensional on the other side. Uh, if it looks good to you, whether you're packing or not, or whether you're packing or leaving holidays or not, if it looks good to you, you should probably keep doing what you're doing, right? Because you're the only person that you have to please, right? Unless this is like a commission, right? But um, you're the only person you have to please. While you're learning this, if you like the way that it looks, and maybe you're punching a little looser than I do, but but there are no visible holes, right? Holidays. Um, so good. You got it. You're done. You did it. You perfected it. You're a master. You're, you're ready to teach. Seriously. And if... Um, if you did it and it's all packed together and it's kind of warping and you're like, man, this isn't going to go into a frame very easily because it's super, 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 super dense, well, then you probably packed it a lot. So you try to find that happy medium. You want to look at your work and say, okay, yeah, it looks good. I don't see, I don't see any glaring pro problems. This is a craft where if you don't see any glaring pro problems, you have achieved success, right? Because it ain't, it ain't that hard. What happens if you do what I did and you are fooling around a little bit? I am quite a ways away from my piece just because I feel like this camera angle is good for you. If I'm a little bit too far away or whatever or I'm snagging it, sometimes I see a tiny little loop on the back just like a little bit. It's a little bit more loopy than flat. It, it really doesn't matter, right? This is the back. It really doesn't matter. It, there's not a lot that matters with this, right? You just want to get it filled in. That's what you want. You want to get it filled in. And it is fun to experiment with different fibers. It is fun to experiment. Here, let me call down and see if he can bring up. Hold on one second. Hey, can you, on the little coffee table, like the, the octagon coffee table, there's that basket that has that unfinished small punch project in it. Can you bring that up? It's like a flower bouquet. Um, I just want to show you that one if possible because that one I've been punching with sock yarn and I've been punching it through the pretty punch and it works great. And how did I know we started this thought earlier? How did I know that my sock yarn was going to fit in the pretty punch? Well, I tried it. 
And you know what else I tried? Like some of my mohair and some of my uh, DK. And you know what? It didn't work. It didn't go through. It totally snagged. And I knew that I was holding the needle right. And I knew that the problem was it was too thick for, for the needle that I was holding. So, um, yeah, so I wasn't able to use it for this project. But I can use it for a project with my fine traditional mini punch. And I will use it for that. So not everything will work, but you don't know until you try. And sometimes the dangest things work that you don't expect to work. More with traditional punch than the regular, uh, than the mini punch. You can see that there's not a lot of um, ply that is gonna go through this particular tool, right? It's very, very small. And oh, oh, I missed an area over there. Sometimes when I miss an area, I kind of feel around with the tip of the needle. I'm gonna carry here, right? I'm definitely carrying, I'm feeling around with the tip for places where I can feel it's vulnerable and then I see where I missed some. And now I push down, cut out a little bit here, and I'm gonna cut this little guy here too. And thank you, awesome. And let's just have a snickety peeks. Oh, I'm at snickety peekies. Where'd you go? All right, you probably can't see it that well. It's getting to be night in here and it's, it's getting dark but you can see that the blue is there. Oh, you know what? I punched one through. Do you see? Do you see that one blue? Wait a minute. Right here. That's standing up from the others. Well, that was that one popped through. I popped that one. You know what? It was probably when I was feeling around with the tip of the well there's actually two that are a little bit raised that I'm going to clip. Um when I was feeling around with the oh, I'm sorry, with the tip of the needle, I probably popped it right out. Probably popped it out. All right. So Hang on, let me show you this. This is quite cute, I think. Um, this is another design that is in ribbon candy hooking. I forget what this is called. I think it might be called, uh, it might be Poirot bouquet. Love Agatha Christie. You probably got that sense, right? Um, love mysteries. I forget what I called it, but any, it's one of the antique rugs that are, it's, it's in the ribbon candy hooking store. This is the working side on the back. Here, let me bring you down. Bring it right down. Right, so this is the working side on the back. This is the side that I was punching, and you see I have to do more of um, the vase, and I have to do the little flowers and stuff. But let me see if I can bring you, this is the correct side, and I had it on my lowest setting, so it was, if it was a pretty punch, it was an A. And this is sock yarn. So let me bring you right close, and I, do, I have different heights going. The background is a little bit higher, which I don't think that is really working well. I might take out the flowers and put them forward. I don't know why I did that. It's probably just experimenting and forgetting. Now, let me show you a few things with this punched piece. This is, let me get you in focus first. Oh, that was almost it, right? That's sock yarn, right? And you can see it's variegated, nice color changing sock yarn. The whole thing is sock yarn. And you see how a little bit came up here, over here. See how that loop is, right? There's a few loops that came up. This is fresh off the frame, but it's not very many. And you can see how, um, can you see how with my vase part, I do have some holidays in here, right? You can see that there's some bits that I haven't, that I've missed a little bit. If you look on the back, you can see I'm hooking, I'm punching it, mini punching it a little bit loosely. Probably gonna have some problems with holidays along here and along there. Well, I am, right? You can see there's some parts that are not that filled in while well. you can see the white fabric behind. So that's all stuff that I'll figure out later. But the point is with this piece, I put it down because I didn't need to be doing it. I'm gonna fix my loops that are sticking up with my, I'm gonna use my more expensive scissors in the future, but I'm basically just cutting them to the surface. And that's the end of that. We don't hear from them again, right? So it's just a question of clipping stuff that's sticking up a little bit when I make little snafus. There's one right here too. I made more snafus with the sock yarn. Why do you think I made more snafus with the sock yarn? It's because it's thicker, right? The sock yarn is way thicker than the like floss that I'm using now. It's like what I'm using now is like one ply. This is, or two ply, this is, this is sock yarn. So this it's still thin, but it's much thicker. And because it's thicker, it, it ups my chances hugely of accidentally stabbing while I'm working and stabbing something out, right, as I go. It, the chance increases um, hugely. So, but it is fun to work with sock yarn and to do something a little bit different. It has a beautiful look to it, 
right? It's a, re and this is very flat. The, um, I think this is just cotton sock yarn, right? Different kinds of sock yarn weights, different materials, they perform differently. But man, they go right through the um, mini punch, like nobody's business. And um, come back to you right here. There we go. We'll stay, we'll stay together for another minute. I'll do, let's do one more color and then I'm gonna get ferociously hungry and, um, and crappy at the same time. So I'm gonna get rid of this again and I'm gonna pull him through here, right? I'm gonna get rid of him. Remember what I do when I'm done. I'm just gonna wind him some more like this. And I think I just dropped my threader. Let's see. So let me look at my colors. I think I might want to do the watermelon. Ow, 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 sorry. I'm not being a baby. Everything is so painful right now. I'm telling you. All right. Yep, that was my threader. All right, so let's do the watermelon. And I think the watermelon is the number four color. I mean, it looks the most watermelon to me. So one more time while we're together, I'm going to thread the needle. Let's see. Let me get my end out here. And because of the way mini punch um, looks when it's done, right? If you are, it's gonna be hard to tell with the sock yarn, I haven't made that much progress here. If you punch too close to another color, they can become almost interwoven. And then they look um, like they fuse together a little bit, like a watercolor, like a watercolor. And that is a very nice look. But if you don't want that look, you wanna stay a little ways away from the color before it. That is going to be the case with the pips or this, the seeds on the watermelon. So one more time, I've got my needle on its interior side, the hollow side, and I'm pushing my um, threader through the needle. It comes out the other side. I get the edge. I'm sorry, the, let me put this here because it's playing me up on the comb. Uh, I get my end to my color and I put it through the threader. and right through like that and then this guy right and then i'm going into the um from the exterior toward the hollow side i'm threading it back in it's kind of the opposite of what you would think that's why i make such a big deal out of that because for me that is counterintuitive and then i pull it through the top and it comes shooting out the top right like smoke like whale whatever kind of analogy you want to think about and let's come over here and do some, there we go, let's do some um, watermelon times. Watermelon times, right here. All right, I'm unsnagging myself. So with little things like the details, with the pupils of the eyes, with the seeds, right, I want to do those last, right? I, because if, if you were to look at the shape of the watermelon, you, you had to decide for yourself, um, what is the, where is the background and where is the foreground? Certainly, if you think about it, you would consider the pink part to be the background, right? I'm just gonna do a little bit of this so we can do some seeds together. So, and I'm also making the point that it really doesn't matter uh, where you go and what direction you go to with this, right? It's all, if you have filled in the section, you have filled in the section, simple as that. Right? You're not gonna see that I'm doing this crazy zentangle spiral thing, right? Hope I don't get in trouble for saying that word because that is a copyrighted word right there. That was stupid. All right. And you know, because the black is going to be very black against the watermelon, I want to be really careful um, to not make the seeds too big. Because if the seeds are big, that's going to look like some kind of gross watermelon, you know? I want them to be nice petite seeds that are, in terms of perspective, uh, in terms of proportion, pretty correct. When I finish doing this little bit of watermelon in the seed, I am going to take it off its frame and show it to you. So you can, I, I just heard a weird noise and felt a weird feeling. Those are never good things in any scenario, right? Uh, and I'm thinking I popped out one of the loops, right? Because something was different. You can just feel it when something's different. Yeah, I think I popped out one of the loops, but we'll see. We'll see. I just did it again. I'm coming in real close because I want it to be um, a pretty small seed. So I'm cutting that out of the way. Let me get rid of this tail too. Um, I'm doing this actually one more time and I'm going to do this fast this time. And I think I might have used the wrong color for the watermelon because I'm running low already on this. So 
I don't think it is number four, but again, if you have your sheet, just check what color is supposed to be watermelon. I'm sitting in the half dark here. I'm guessing it was probably 14. Sorry about that. I've got the wrong color. I'll have to sort myself out later, but your, your key is correct and you should have perfect amounts. All right, so I'm taking some black off for the seed. Um, Kaz says, oh, for keeping us company today. I so wish you were really here. Me too. I am still thinking about going to Texas. I have to still think on that. Have a restful evening, you too, sweetheart. Kim wrote, my husband always says, never get between Kim and food. <laughs> Kim, I, I, I picture you being like a, like an, um, with your biking, like so athletic and like such a health nut. Are you not such a health nut? Maybe you do eat healthy food and you just really love it. I do too. I love, I mean, I love all kinds of food, to be honest, including healthy food. I just should maybe choose healthy food more often. I'm just threading this one more time because I like healthy food as much as anything else, you know, I'm just a bit of a gross pig. I tend to eat what's what's available quickly because I'm always in a hurry. It's not a good way to live. And when you live like that, right, you end up having health problems, as I found out. So I didn't make that tail big enough, and hence it did not pull the tail through. I'm rushing now, so I'm going to slow down. Oh, um, oh, wait a minute. I missed a bunch of comments. Higher level. Vicky, good to see you. Yeah, this is a fun kit. And, you know, I'll make it so that you can, I'm going to put all of the fluffies, because remember I said how there's tons of fluffies. I'm going to put them all uh, out there as mini punch kits, right? Because I'm doing at this moment, let me see which ones I have on my frame. I have a couple on as um, rug hooking designs right now. This one I've done, this summer one, remember the one with Fluffy having a cocktail? It's not going to come into focus, is it? Well, I'll show you on ribbon candy hooking. There's there's four fall ones, and the fall ones are um, Fluffy goes mushrooming, and there's he's got a bowl full of all these different kinds of mushrooms in front of him. Um, 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 fluffy, oh, A for autumn. Fluffy trick or treats. Fluffy gets candied apples, and so those are the four, All right? Mushrooms, trick-or-treats, candied apples. No, where's the last one? Oh, makes a quilt. He makes a quilt, and he's got a little tomato pin cushion. And I'll be kidding all of the fall ones and winter ones next, just in case uh, you want one kitted with the threads that is, a, that is one that isn't kitted yet. I am getting, honestly, totally caught up, which is kind of a miracle, and I feel very proud of myself, all things considered. Second book in, started Sneaky Project, not talking about it yet, so no one's on my case and wants anything, right? I don't mean you all, I mean um, publishers and stuff. So um, just doing sneaky stuff, catching up on work, and uh, time to do things like beef up the store and stock products that need to be stocked. So I got myself caught on this, which I've never had happen before. I think I took the wrong end of it. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it attached like that. But if that happens, you might have to just unwind a little bit and fix it, right? It's, um, it's a very simple tool, that little, that little bobbin. Now, here I am hovering over a seed, right? And when, I try, when I'm doing filigree pieces like this, I really try to do them pretty soon after. I try to do this close together. I wouldn't want to walk away and then try to look for the seed. I, I punched the, pit, the pink two seconds ago, and I remember where it is. So I'm in a good position to be able to say seed is right here. I did three up. I'm going one across. Anybody watch those Hallmark uh, crossword mysteries? I really love that series. And I came down like a little triangle and then I press and pull away and right, so it looks like I got it. I think I might be at risk here of um, my seed being too big. And if that's the case, I can redo it. Let's do it, right? Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Let's. Ba, 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 that's why birds do it. Bees do it. Even educated, please do it. Here we go. Now, this is the moment of Cole Porter. No, it's the moment of truth. Here we are. So, here we are. Let me bring you down here. This is as far as I got with my mouth rolling. 
Um, I can easily do one of these in a day. Honest to God, I can. This is my working side where I was. This is my other side. I think all the things that we talked about, to be fair, I mean, I love to run my mouth, but I think everything we talked about is important, and we hit some things multiple times. Well, it means they were that much more important. If I said the same thing three times, it was three times more important than just the average, right? So you can maybe see through the, the picture. I see his two little eyes right here. This is how it's going. This is how it looks. It's not bad. I have to say, it's not bad. I quite like it. Good even pile, right? I have to say, probably won't say the sentence again anytime soon, I quite like that watermelon seed. It looks, it looks quite good. This is a single line, right, of the edge of the watermelon that I did. You can see when I fill in the rest of it, that's going to be a good-looking watermelon. I've got my blue cloud up here. I popped out two. I popped out two, just like I, I could feel it when I did it. It's, it's, you know, it's like if you're used to sewing and your sewing machine does something like your bobbin runs out, and you know how you can just, it, it, it is not audible to anybody but you and dolphins. Like someone in the room with you is gonna, never going to hear the noise, but you hear it. Same thing with this craft. You punch something wrong and you just feels a little bit wrong and you know that that there's a loop popped out on the other side, but you saw how what, how easy it was for me to fix it. I literally just clipped it. There are no more loops that are that are sticking up on this side. They're all the same height. Now, I think I'm going to do what Kaz suggested and do the whiskers in Hi Pine. Good to see you. Do the whiskers in a higher um, setting. But for now, I'm quite happy with the seed. Let me bring, you know what, let me do something different. Hang on. I'm going to bring you over here. Do the light better. So this is like the lamp light here. Right? So, I mean, let, well, let's continue the weirdness of this conversation and just say, that seed might be too big for the next person, but for me, I quite like the seed. I think it looks exactly right. And what I did with the seed, just as a reminder, I'm going to come back to you, was I went up like a triangle, like a little slice of pie, more like a pie than a triangle, right? It was not like a, a even triangle. It was a whatever. Um, I went up maybe three stitches, one across, came down, and then just a couple stitches to fill in the center. And for me, that made the right kind of a um, seed. Um, watermelon seed. It would be the same for pumpkin seed or any seed. With centers of flowers, with pupils of eyes, with the pupil of eyes, the eye here, I did three. Three dots. Boop, boop, boop. Like a little perfect triangle inside the round eye. And then you check and you make sure that you like it. And if you don't like it, if you're like, oh, it looks like um, there's something wrong, bleh, then add a few more stitches to make the pupil bigger. And then if you make it so big that you're like, oh, it looks like he just got his eyes dilated at the uh, optometrist, then you just pull a few out, right? You figure it out as you go along. This craft is a moving target, like everything that we do, right? Everything that we do is fixable, um, morphable. It's, it's all work that you can evolve. It's all work that you can uh, do the handcraft part of it and then scrutinize, get some distance, uh, get some pers literal perspective and think about uh, what could be different, what could be better and make changes if you care enough to make the changes. If you like it the way it is and you say, oh shoot, I was supposed to use the light blue. Well, who cares? I mean, if, if you don't care and you like the way a different blue looks and it's in there, don't take it out. Let me show you one more thing that I meant since we're here and then I'll close out. Let me come over here again. See all the garbage in this side? No, that's not gonna work either. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can show you an example. It's very hard because my I have the overhead light on too. It's just dark. I don't know if you can see where. Wait a minute, I'm not helping myself here because my hand isn't working. There we go. You probably can't see because it ain't going to want to focus. Hang on. I'm just playing the focus game for a second. Oh, that's better. Can you see along the edge, there's some instances where the colors blended, like I see that lilac bit that's on top of a blue? That's because I got too close together, right? So I have to be that close for you to be able to see because from here, you really can't, right? You really can't see. But I can see that one little stitch, and you know what else I can do with that? This, right? Guess what, it's not there anymore. But 
sometimes if you get too close, they like jump into each other's business. And it becomes a question of, um, <laughs> thanks Rita. It becomes a question of, do you care or do you want to start taking stuff out? Because as you can imagine, when you are, when you're punching that close together, it's the same as carrying. If you have crossed over into the territory of the next color and then you're trying to pull it out, they might get caught. Right, and, and what's gonna happen, is it gonna rip your backing? No, it's never gonna rip your backing. What it could do is pull out more than you wanted because you might accidentally start pulling out another color. And then what will you have to do? You have to spend an extra five minutes punching those colors again because you'll have pulled out a couple of extra loops. Right, it's not gonna be a sweater that like unravels. It's gonna be very small scale problem. Um, but these are the problems that happen with a small scale craft like mini punch. Everything's small. The tools are small, the yarn is small, um, the canvas is small, the problems are small, right? What we talked about just now, I can't think of anything, honestly, I can't think of anything else that could go wrong while you're uh, mini punching, right? I, honestly, I can't. And when I do classes, I feel like I'm almost like some kind of charlatan because it's like once people get going, there's really not a lot that can go wrong. Oh, it's not working, it's not working. It's like, okay, well, you've got your yarn wrapped around your armpit. Um, that's the problem. And it's like, oh, okay, now it's working great. Or um, that's about it. Or really, that's about it because we wouldn't be working with the wrong gauge of yarn in class, right? Because I wouldn't have brought it. But there's not a lot of things that can that can go really wrong. People struggle with very, very and me too with basic things like threading the needle. Like Kaz was saying at the beginning, we did not solve the mystery of why that why the threader didn't go through your ultra punch and it went through mine. Who knows? It is a persnickety world. The whole world is a crazy moving target. But just make sure that you get out of that wacky mind frame of saying, um, oh, something's wrong, something's not working, it must be me. It's not you, right? It's your tool. And in a situation, it, and you don't know which tool. Is it the yarn? Is it the thread? Is, it the, ba is the backing fabric wrong? It could be anything, right? It could be anything. It could be any, any of those. And the best thing you can do is ex do controlled experiments and try to figure out which thing is playing you and replace it or change it. But it's, it's easy peasy stuff, and there's not a lot of pratfalls here with this particular craft. It is a beautiful, very fast craft. You do small scale work for the most part, right? Very small scale work. Um, but it is a lot of fun, and you can use different materials. You, you're not limited to the original vintage materials, and they are still selling um, these spools, Amazon sells kits with like primary colors and stuff. It's, I have the vintage ones. It's all the same, right? It's all the same. It's either cotton or acrylic and it's all the same. I'm thinking, what is that? Oh, I have a new freckle. God, I hope I'm not, hope I don't have skin cancers. That was, that was off the rails, wasn't it? Every, everything is falling apart right now. That's what makes me think it. I feel like everything is unraveling so quickly. Anyway, um, you can get these and, um, they are great, right? Um, but you could use stuff you already have too. You're never going to get yarn other than like sock yarn, possibly lace yarn. You're never going to get like your acrylic yarns, your yarns from Joann's or Michael's through a miniature punch needle. Um, you might get your DMC floss, maybe. You might get even thinner floss, right? DMC does thinner floss too. Uh, you'll definitely get your Valdani. Um, there's lots of materials you can get through, but if you have if you have something in your needle and your loops are not coming out, or they're pulling out as, as soon as you get you get one in and you're like good there's one in or there's two in then you do the next one it pulls out the first two it's probably your fiber is not work is not right for your needle and then you have to make decisions and and sometimes if you do have a larger needle a larger shaft right because if, if you have like the Russian one and you've got like the three right that holds the three if your yarn is too thin it's just dancing around in there getting itself snagged snagging on itself right, because it's a little bit on the thin side, you absolutely can double up your fiber um, to put through a punch needle or triple, up, triple it up. But as soon as it starts snagging, it means you went too far and you're too thick again, right? So it's all trial and error. Everybody who does this craft, right, fools around, experiments with different stuff, uh, figures out what will work, because the filling in of the colors is very, very easy, right? And you just get a feel for that as you go. You're gonna, you're gonna have some things where you pull some loops out, uh, where there's trouble, where you, where you are figuring out how to get your groove on. It takes a little while, and you hope that it's sooner rather than later, 
but really it might be later, right? So you have to be patient with yourself. Make sure that everything is working right. If you have any questions, log on with me. Heard a big bang. I hope that wasn't somebody. I hope that wasn't somebody's head. Um, or log on with Kirsten, right? Kirsten Gay runs the live um, sort of hook in every Tuesday. I don't know if you can hear that. It doesn't sound good. I'm gonna, hold on one second. Let me just check, let me just check. Jocelyn, are you all right? Joss, was that you? Making that noise? The crazy screaming? Who's making a crazy screaming noise? Good Lord. All right, all good. Uh, Jossie, want to come say hi? Want to say bye to everybody? Yeah, just put a shirt on. She's got to put a shirt on. She's getting some you-know-what. So we can't be walking around without a shirt on. Um, just experiment. And um, it was Teddy. It was Teddy doing another bender. Um, yeah, she's, like, she's just walking around with her underpants on. Summer days. Just experiment, and if you are having problems, log on to Coffee Time or Cocktail Time. Send me an, um, a message to ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. Show me a picture of what's going on, right? Come here, you puff. Oh, you poof. You got you a poof. You got yourself all buttoned up right to the top, huh? Got she still got ta She still got tags on her shirt. We That's got a little button. Yeah, we got a cootie right here. We got a cootie patootie. We got Rus Russian nesting doll of cuteness right here, right? I'm the least cute. I'm the outer shell. What do you mean? You're the You're inner the shell. Cute. And Buttons is the, um, so Kat says, hey, Joss. He's the cutest, you're saying? No, you're cuter than Buttons. Do you feel, you feel all challenged because I said he's cuter? <laughs> Super cute. Well, I hope that you did. <laughs> Don't you love her hair? Doesn't it look great? See? Your cut is very noticeable and stylish, right? You look like a different lady. I love her cut too. I think you should undo this though. Do we need? Do we? Do we have enough problems in our life without having our shirt? I was just okay, I don't even I know this shirt. I just put it on so I could come and say bye. Well, you picked it out for the school year, so maybe you'll wear it later. There she is. All right. And that will kick off. Dave said hi too. The shirt's already off. So good luck with your mini punching. Let me know if you're having any issues. Right? It is very. It is an easy craft. Give yourself a break. Give yourself some time to figure it out um, and, and reach out for some help if you're struggling because if you're struggling, it is, I, this, this is the one thing that is a takeaway from this class that's super important. It's not you, it's not you, right? It's something that you're doing with your tools. It's not you, that doesn't make sense at all, right? Oh, it's me, oh, it's not you, it's your tools. So just check in with me or check in with someone else who knows what you're doing, send a photograph of what you're doing I love teaching in person because I can see what someone's hand is doing and even before it happens I'm looking and thinking yep yeah, I know what's good I know where I'm headed next uh, where, where I'm headed on the table next because I can see someone's doing something and I'm thinking let them let them just do it for a minute so that they know you know how to make that mistake right the thing about mistakes right that like classic um, um, Mr. Rogers ism I, from his biography, he told a story that was something like, I'm going to end on this. He told a story that was something like um, about a, a guy who was interviewing um, some kids for a job, like at a garage, like at a mechanic's garage or something like that. And um, he interviewed this kid and the kid said, he said to the kid, oh, do you know how to do this? Yep, know how to do that. Uh, do you know how to do that? Have you done this before? Yep, done that. And everything that he said, the kid was like, know how to do it, expert in it. I got it. Know how to do that. And... Um, and, um, and the guy said, okay, well, it was nice meeting you. And he said, you know, do I have the job? And, um, and the guy said something like, um, you know, I, I, think, I think you're a fantastic young man, but no, um, because you have no experience making any mistakes. And if you never make any mistakes, how are you ever gonna learn how to solve your mistakes, right? You have a lot of experience in doing stuff right, but you're, you're saying like you've never made a mistake, you've never had, then how do you know how to solve your mistakes? And it's true. Right, we have to be honest about saying I, I screwed this up 50 times. Now there's a hole in the backing. There's worse things, isn't there? So you just come back to it after a few walks around the block, and um, you try to figure out what you did wrong, 
And with that, that information is going to be priceless and invaluable. If someone can tell you what you're doing wrong before you put holes in your backing, uh, even better. But that's not the way life always is, is it? So it is what it is. Um, yeah, and it's it's great. To, you remember the mistakes, right? When things go well, you sometimes don't know why. <laughs> Isn't that true? It's eerie sometimes when things are going too well. But when things are going well, um, you don't you don't realize that there could be a mistake. And then next time you do the project, maybe you do the same thing as before, but but the that little margin of error thing happened the next time. And because it's like the second or third or 10th time you did it, you're thinking, why is this happening? This has never happened to me before, where it was just lucky that it hadn't, you know, those kinds of things. So it's important to be able to clock your mistakes and say, aha, even if this hasn't happened to me before, this is obviously one of the greatest hits that can happen. So I'm going to remember this better now because I did it, right? And some people definitely learn better by making their own mistakes. Some people, you can tell them, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, um, you know, don't eat junk food, don't take drugs, don't drink too much, don't do all this stuff. There's a, don't go with that guy, he's not good for you, but there's other people that have to do each thing themselves, right? And, and we don't know maybe what kind of person we are until you're at that weird crossroads. So um, yeah, so mistakes are okay. Just reach out for help when you feel like it and when you feel like working on the project. And otherwise, find something else great to do that is feeding your soul and making you happy in the meantime. And um, I am here for you if you need some help. And thank you. I hope I feel better soon, too. I'll give you some notice um, about tomorrow about running a show. I do want to run a Monday show. I just don't know if I'll run it in the, in the morning because um, I really feel like the kids are antsy and they would like to do something. So I'll think about that and I'll talk about that uh, with them while we're having dinner. And I'll put up a post about what time I plan to run a show tomorrow. And I hope you had fun. I hope you learned some good stuff. And uh, it's just fun being together. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. You too. You too. I will see you all. I'll see you tomorrow at some point to be continued. Make sure that you're signed up for the Henri Rousseau class. It is going to be a killer class. Lots of fun. Lots of time together to do some amazing designs. Your designs with lots of prompts and fun games. And uh, regardless, I will see you at some point this week. And have a great rest of your Labor Day weekend if you are in the US. Uh, I will see you all soon. Take care. Hey Carol.